Hi. How are we going? Yes, you're right. Uh, this has not ended yet. <laughs> we are still going. We've just reached day one of the convention. I don't know how many more days there are left of this this tale of weeb. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get through it because <clears throat> this is what we all asked for, and this is what we deserve. <laughs> Essentially. Okay, um, just loading up the game now from the Itch Marketplace. I'm sorry about the sweetie noises, but I'm probably going to need a drink for this, and I definitely deserve some sweeties. Mm, nom, nom, nom. Here we go. There's that <clears throat> theme music we all love so much. Oh, jeez. Mm. Okay, let's load our game. I think this is where we're up to. Yeah. <laughs> what? No! What? Oh shit, what have I done? Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> I've like somehow deleted the load, the save state. Yes. Wait, who the hell are you? Oh, you're the mother of that day person. Okay. Itsuki says, did you have a busy day, sweetie? Himurare sits on a couch in her living room, still dressed in her attire from the Idol Fest. She stares at the TV, unblinking. Ray's sightless eyes can't see the see can't see the screen, but she can still hear what's going on, and what she hears makes spittle form in the corners of her mouth. It's a music channel. Oh my God! We really need to keep belaboring the point. That she has a visual impairment. <laughs> Ray loves watching music channels. Not that she can really watch them. Am I right? When her mother enters the room, however, the young girl turns her head. Which is interesting because she can't see her mother. So why is she turning her head? Interesting. It wasn't that busy. Come now, you're just being modest. I know how popular you are. There were a few avid fans, but I think most people went to the Kokusai Center because they like Aiko. I like Aiko too. Oh, I know you do, honey. Something twists inside Itsuki's chest. She knows what's going to come next. I wish I could listen to Aiko perform. I know you do, dear, but you think it will be too dangerous. Yay! I know how much you love Aiko, but I thought the Kokusai Center was crowded enough today. It'll only get bit busier tomorrow when our concert takes place. I didn't really want to let you attend the handshaking event, to tell you the truth, but Kazuki managed to talk me around. What? Wait, do you... My parents never refer to each other by name when they're talking to me. Is this a thing? Do some people refer to their, like, a, a child's father as, as their name? Kazuki managed to talk me around. Hmm, interesting. Hey there, Hazardius! I know, Mom. But I was fine. The PR team took good care of me. I'm glad. Sayuri's a nice woman, isn't she? She's very nice, and Ryoichi is very funny, and Hideki is very sweet, and Kenji is very... sexual. No? They pause. She can't think of the right word. Very much like Kenji. I can imagine. Himura Itsuki smiles at her daughter fondly. I hope you're not too upset you can't attend the concert, dear. I didn't think you'd let me, so I didn't get my hopes up. Itsuki sighs. Maybe she's a little too overprotective, but it would be a cruelty if she wasn't. A might be a strong, resilient girl, but she's only a child. And then there's the fact that she can't see! And then there's her eyesight to consider. Letting Ray room free in a packed convention hall would be the epitome of poor parenting. I mean, like, if she's got, like, um... I don't know what, what the official name is for the device that you use to hold out in front of you and walk around, but like, 
it seems like many people who have visual impairments are perfectly fine by themselves. Mitsuki did think of using a member of the PR team as a chaperone, maybe Hideki? But according to Kazuki, they have their hands full enough as it is. Kazuki, Itsuki's husband, will be at the Kokusai Center. As one of Lyric's head programmers, he'll be busy throughout the weekend. I heard that there's something weird going on here. Yeah, you mean on the, the stream or in the game? Because both. <laughs> Though the details of his job are strictly confidential, he told Itsuki a few days ago that there had been some problems with Aiko. Itsuki hopes these problems won't impede their time together as a family too much. Kazuki's been so busy lately, it's a rare event for him to return before nightfall. There's a convention on, he might not be home till much later. Didn't meeting your fans cheer you up? A little. I met an interesting girl. Oh, what was she like? Oh, yay! It's the main character! She said her name was Hana. She was one of Yuko's friends. Oh my! Itsuki, who knows Yuko in passing, she's familiar with most of Lyric's employees, is wary of the trainee idol. She knows Yuko has been nice to her Ray, and she appreciates it, but there's something about Yuko's attitude that makes Itsuki worry. Her clothes, too. And all her makeup. I hope she wasn't a brash, noisy sort of girl. She seemed nice. She was quiet, actually. Really? Yes, she talked to Yuko a bit about their school, Jomon. If I could see properly, would I be able to go there? What? Itsuki winces. This is a topic that always makes her feel uncomfortable. Yes, let's, let's consider her feelings. She decides to switch the subject rather than address her child. Are you hungry, dear? A little. Then I'll make you something to eat. How does eel sound? Eel sounds good. Good, why don't you get changed out of your idol clothes then? They really are pretty, but I wouldn't want you to spill anything on them. Are you sure you know how to change out of your clothes because you have a visual impairment? I don't spill food, I'm careful. I know you are dear, but there's always a chance. All right then. Nayrit nods her head obediently like a clockwork doll and slides, what? The clockwork dolls not? <laughs> I think it might have been better to, to like compare to those sort of solar powered nodding things. But then again, like, I guess you would have to say solar powered nodding things, which would be bore which wouldn't make sense. And slides off the couch. <laughs> yes, another never ending staircase. <laughs> she exits the living room and pads her way up the stairs, her fingers trailing along the banister for support very confidently striding up the stairs. <laughs> I love it so much, it's so... Mm. These people in this game live in massive houses. Just saying. Itsuki watches her, her shoulders slump. Her little girl tries so hard, despite the odds that are ah! Sorry, Th this is just... <laughs> this reads is very ableist to me. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I think I mentioned before, one of my best friends um, has a disability and like this kind of rhetoric, it, she's been telling me all these stories and, mm, you know, I get kind of protective <laughs> anyway. And what does she, she do? She forbids Ray to attend her favorite idol's concert. That's Ray's reward for all her hard work. And Ray was looking forward to the concert so much too. But Itsuki knows she's doing the right thing. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, oh, Cab Dab Redeemed by Umberkin. She's doing this for Ray's own good. It is incredibly, like, it reads as very sort of paternalistic to me. She and Kazuki both decided on it. So there's no use being upset now. That eel won't cook itself. Gross. What if it did? Today was a lot more hectic than I thought it would be. Didn't I warn you? I guess, but I didn't expect it. I'm just, I'm as tired as a dog. 
Well, we all have to get our hands dirty from time to time. If you ask me, the convention was too dirty. All that noise and people everywhere. Some of the outfits they were wearing were horrendous. How can people make such spectacles out of themselves? Oh, lighten up, Ken. They were just having a good time. Isn't that the point? People having a good time? Not if I can help it. Kenji rolls his eyes emphatically, but he isn't entirely serious. Oh, you don't say. Even he, despite being a regular stick in the mud, knows how to laugh at himself, albeit with a certain touch of dryness. Ryoichi, oh my god, yes, it was a jerk. We get it. Ryoichi seems to appreciate the jerk, no matter how stilted, because he laughs. Oh. <laughs> Ryoichi is a handsome man, but he's even more handsome when he laughs. Kenji is glad he's the one who gets to see Ryoichi like that. Oh, look, look at that little smile there. Unfortunately, being an upbeat person, Ryoichi laughs a lot. Wait, unfortunately? He's the one who gets to see Ryoichi like this. But unfortunately... Being an upbeat person, Yoichi laughs a lot. What a shame. He always looks so happy no matter who he talks to. It's enough to make Kenji feel jealous. Not that he'll ever admit to it. Yeah, I just wish you'd be miserable outside of your time with me all the time. This is a healthy relationship. Yoichi would just use that information to poke fun at him. He even lost his pants. <laughs> Yoichi pokes fun, at fun, pokes fun at Kenji more than enough already. So, how much more time do we have? That depends. Unlike you, I don't have a cute wife waiting for me with a home-cooked meal. Kenji winces. Thinking about Misaki is painful. Don't, please. I'm just trying to inject some reality into the situation. I thought we came here to escape from all of that. True, I did think you were looking a bit run down at work. So this was for my sake? Yep, it's an office-sanctioned period of R&R. &R. Don't you mean... S and M. <laughs> I couldn't have one of my employees collapsing on me, particularly when we're on such a tight schedule. It would be awful for business. Kenji presses his fingers against his exposed collarbone. His face flushes. Presses. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand why you would do that. There are new bruises on top of the bruises Ryoichi left yesterday. Scratches from fingernails and neat small circlets of grooves from insistent teeth. I don't think you're doing it right. <laughs> grooves from insistent teeth? Like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's how bite w bites work. Was that office sanctioned too? It's nice to know it's nothing personal. I don't like to mix work and pleasure. You're awful at flattery. This isn't what the, that isn't what the ladies say. Sayuri still hasn't fallen for fallen for your charms. I don't understand how this game is so horny either. But then again, you know, like this is the subject matter, so it was inevitable. She will eventually. You mark my words. No, no, don't be like that. That's not. That's not romantic. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Ryoichi reclines lazily on the bed, his legs spread wide like he owns the place. I'm pretty sure he did that before. Well, even he did pay for the hotel room. Perhaps he does, for another half hour at least. After all, there after that their allotted time will be up. Ryoichi will return to his cat and Kenji will return to his wife. And all will be right with the, in the world. It would be like the secret tryst never occurred. Never even occurred. Kenji's getting so, so tired of all these things. Break up with your bloody wife! Seriously, it's so, it's so rude. You know, at least have an arrangement. Ryuichi, for his part, looks entirely at his ease. He smiles with careless self-confidence, his legs draped over the bed. He's, he's basically doing the splits. That's, that's how I lie back on my bed, just like... <laughs> Once, Kenji found Ryuichi's habit of sprawling himself across every available inch of furniture. Irritating. Now, however, well, he still finds it's, it irritating, but it's marginally less irritating than it used to be. The kisses help. The biting, too. You know, this is pretty unusual. Hmm? I mean, we came here yesterday, too. I thought it was your policy not to frequent hotels. 
especially not the same hotel, too often, in case people get suspicious. I mean, presumably if you've got allotted times, then you're going to a love hotel, and they know what you're going there for. <laughs> that is my policy, but I'm feeling, feeling a little worn out after today, too. Plus, this hotel is closest to the Coxeye Center. So even you have weaknesses? I have many weaknesses. Wine, women, cute cats. A smile captures the corners of Ryoichi's lips. It's not nearly as insincere as he intends. Wait, what? And you, of course. If Genji were a cute high school girl, he would probably blush. Luckily, he's a man. He isn't a cute high school girl, but he still blushes. There we go. Well, it's nice to know I can cheer you up. You do. Hello. It's hard to tell sometimes. What can I say? Real men have to play it cool. I don't wear my heart on my sleeve, but I hope my feelings are apparent. Kenji lets his fingers trail across the patchwork of bruises that decorate his clavicle. <laughs> like, what, what, what's, he's very obsessed with his collarbone here. It is adequate. Oh, you. I hope no one, like, comes and, and joins the stream just to see this and thinks that I'm playing a game, you know, which is like this. <laughs> Ryoichi clicks his tongue against the roof of his mouth, but he doesn't seem annoyed. If anything looks amused, does, is this scene necessary, though? Still, I really am worried about the Idol Fest situation. So they're back to talking about work, were they? Kenji sighs. I thought you didn't mix work and pleasure. I know, I know, but it's been weighing on my mind. We were even shorter on stuff than I imagined. Yeah, it wouldn't have been so bad if Maida and Shina had been there to pick up the slack, but a sigh. A sigh. Ryuichi directs the exhalation of air upwards, making his bangs flutter. <sighs> Despite being the oldest on the PR team, Ryuichi has very fashionable hair. Is it short and choppy, though? He takes an inordinate amount of care over his appearance, even more so than the, win than the women. He certainly fusses more than Sayuri, who doesn't bother to wear makeup half the time. Oh my god, what a slob! There's no use crying over spilt milk, I guess. We can manage. I'm tough. Hello, boring, depressed introvert. I'm sorry that, that this is what we're doing. Ryoichi, hopefully this is the last time. Ryoichi flexes his muscles. Kenji rolls his eyes. Wow, how cool. Thank you, thank you. Ryoichi laughs and bows his head, much like an actor accepting his dues. I must admit, however, I am a little worried about the Aiko situation. She hasn't been doing too well? Not in the slightest. The tech team gave me a call when you were in the shower, you know. And what did they say? But Kenji knows before Ryoichi opens his mouth that it isn't good news. Why else would they call him? Like he... Wait, wait a second. She hasn't been doing too well? Not in the slightest. He literally said that. And what did they say? Kenji knows that it isn't good news. Of course! They just, just... It can't be. Oryoichi wouldn't look so tired. And he wouldn't have literally just said that... Ugh. They said they'd run into even more problems with her. What is it this time? Oh, I can't tell you the specifics. It's top secret? That's the word that comes up in their relationship a lot. Secret. Nah, it's not secret. I just don't understand it too well myself. Kazuki could do a better job, but he's not here. You know, I can hardly even operate the, that tablet he gave me. It's a good thing you have me. Indeed it is. You're one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Oh. Mm. Kenji turns his head away and bites his lower lip. He's blushing again. Urgh. <laughs> Sorry, I have to screen cap this. <laughs> Just out of context. <clears throat> Paste that there. I'm gonna save it as... Erg. Just give it to people out of context sometimes. This isn't just embarrassing, it's downright humiliating. What is? Of course, it's all Ryoichi's fault. Kenji wouldn't get so flustered if Ryoichi wasn't so unexpectedly, disarmingly, charmingly serious at the worst possible times. I think there are some serious problems with poor Aiko's files. Some sort of, like, some sort of corruption. The tech team tried to fix it, but the corruption might be too advanced at this point. If not even Kazuki can fix it, it must be really serious. He's like the best programmer we have. Nobody knows Aiko better than him. Nobody except her lead programmer. 
Oh, that's the one that went missing, the OAT size. Guess we'll just have to pray that nothing goes wrong. Otherwise, our necks will be on the line. Wait, what is the... what is... Whatever his name's role, if he's not the lead programmer on ICO, that he's the one who knows how to fix things. And not the lead programmer. Kenji swallows. All of a sudden his throat feels right and dry. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh thank god. Hey Sayuri, I'm sorry to call so late. Don't worry, it's fine. Uh, are you sure? I can hang up if you want. No, don't do that. I'm free, I promise. Is she in a haunted house or something? Really? Really, really. Well, not entirely. It's late in the evening and Sayori is wending her way home through the darkened streets, trying to juggle two carrier bags full of shocking, shopping and her cell phone. To add insult to injury, her stomach is starting to rumble. After a busy day's work at the convention center, surrounded by overzealous day fans who simply did not understand the arcane art of queuing, Sayori wanted nothing more than to return home Return to a home-cooked meal and a warm, toasty bed. Naturally, the home-cooked meal was out of the question, given Sayori's status as a singleton, but she had no qualms about cooking the meal with her own fair hands. That was one of the things Sayori's grandmother taught her, in addition to a healthy appreciation for green tea. How to cook. Oh, is that what you were hinting at? That was Sayori's general plan, until she opened the kitchen cupboards and realized with a sinking sensation, they were completely empty. You just wasted like a minute of my time in saying Sayori had gone to the shops to get some food to cook. Oh boy. Not even cobwebs. Hence the trip to the convenience store to purchase more cobwebs. Right now her greatest desire in life is returning home with her purchases, whipping up something quick and easy over rice, and then falling asleep. Sleep sounds very, very good right about now. But she can't ignore Misaki, not when she sounds so troubled. She'll just have to make the best of it, Sayori decides, as her shopping bags cut grooves into the palms of her hands. Endure, endure, endure. It's the same mantra she repeats to herself whenever Ryoichi flirts with her. Or you can just report him? To HR? Um, can I hear the wind in the background? Probably, but it's no big deal. Why would she answer in that way? <laughs> Why would yeah, you can hear the wind, but it's no big deal. Why would you think to say that? You're not outside, are you? I'm just walking back from the convenience store. The streets are deserted. Having some company might be nice. <clears throat> well, if you're sure. Stop dithering, woman. Sayori is half a mind to say this, but she stops herself just in time. She doesn't want to sound like Ryoichi. Wait, wouldn't it be Kenji? Who would be, like, stop dithering? I was just wondering, um, how was work? Busy. Was the convention center packed? That's putting it lightly, it was heaving. Well, at least that means Lyric is doing rather well, right? There was never any doubt of that. The idol industry is booming. So many people queued up to shake hands with Himurare, you'd think that she was some sort of goddess. Maybe to her adoring fans, she really is. It wouldn't have been too bad if Maida and Shina hadn't taken time off, but... Ah, I see, overcrowded and understaffed? Something like that, still. These events are always overwhelming, even when the full team is here. I doubt it would make much of a difference. Idle, an unabridged collection of shaggy dog stories. <laughs> yeah. Maeda and Sheena's presence wouldn't have been able to quell the more incessant fans who tried to prostrate themselves at Ray's feet as, their, as her unworthy acolytes. Now that was irritating. Wait, wasn't they just saying before that there weren't that many people? Even more irritating than returning home to an empty kitchen cupboard. So you'd think that she would be pointing out... Because she was saying... They were saying that everyone was there for Aiko. And that's what the crowd was there for, so... You know, um, if you need a helping hand, I'm actually free tomorrow. That might be helpful, I can call Ryoichi about it. But say, is that the only reason you want to help? Haha, uh -huh, what do you mean? Stop pretending, I've known you for too long, Misaki. You're not the most subtle girl out there. I I don't know what you're talking about. I'm I'm totally innocent, I swear. It's a weird turn of phrase in this situation. Sayori rolls her eyes. If Misaki's panicked voice wasn't enough proof, her insistence of total innocence, even going so far as to swear upon it. 
It's the final nail in the coffin. You just want to keep an eye on Kenji, don't you? Ah, well, um... Isaki's voice trails away. She laughs awkwardly. Her laughter sounds even more pitiable over the phone. Was it that obvious? It was pretty obvious. Ah, ha, 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 I guess I'm a dummy after all. You're not a dummy. It's normal for women to worry about wayward fiancés. Particularly if that fiancé is Kenji. Is Kenji not back yet? No, um, I was actually wondering if he was working overtime. I don't think he's working. He left the center a little earlier than I did, actually. Oh, right. And he isn't with you? No, he isn't. I don't think he'd want to spend time with me outside of work. I see. Maybe he's avoiding me, then. Why would he do that? I don't know. It's just, I know he's been busy lately, and I know it's selfish of me, but it seems like we never spend any time together. It's almost like he doesn't want to spend time with me. Is that why you want to help out tomorrow? Yeah, but that probably sounds pathetic. Do I really have to resort to such underhanded methods to see my own partner? How on earth did this happen? Just talk to each other! Sayuri grits her teeth together, her eyes narrow. How on earth did this happen? If Sayuri had a charming girlfriend like Misaki, she'd never treat her so poorly. Misaki deserves better. She deserves much, much better. Sadly, Misaki doesn't seem to want anybody better. For all the hurt he's caused her over the last year, she wants Kenji. And who is Sayuri to get in the way? She's supposed to be Misaki's friend, and as her friend, she should support her. That's what friends do. Right? Don't worry about it. I'll sort you out with a volunteer pass. You will? Yeah, and I won't breathe a word of it to Kenji either. Let's give him a nice surprise. That's the passing of... Oh, thank God, we're finally on the second day of the convention. Ugh. Cheery melody from my eye call alarm clock wakes me up the following day. I yawn and stretch sitting up in bed. The covers fall away from my body, pooling about my thighs and legs. Wait, your thighs and legs? <laughs> Do you store them separately or something? <laughs> pooling about my thighs and legs. I reach my hands upwards, patting down my short and choppy hair. It's even messier than usual after a night of tossing and turning, unable to get to sleep. My eyes feel dry and crusty. I'm sure I have a fetching pair of deep purple bags beneath them? What? Is that a thing? I reach over and turn- th That means you're not hydrated enough, I'm pretty sure. I reach over and turn off my alarm clock, thank god, silencing the strains of Aiko's lost and found. I love that song. I must to listen to it in the mornings for over a year now, but it's too upbeat for my current state of mind. I can't stop thinking about Aiko. I think I dreamt about her, too. Aiko with blank, empty eyes, lying in some abandoned and unused factory, her hair covered in dust, her clothes rumpled, her legs bent backwards awkwardly. What do they do with virtual idols when they break down? Do they fix them? Scrap them? Use them for spare parts? I don't know. I don't know, and it's my lack of knowledge that makes me worry. Oh, you don't say. I reach for my cell phone and click on the Paku Paku icon. I glance at Aiko's last message. I'm sorry, my data is becoming unstable. Please help. What happened after that? Is she alright? Would sending another message help? Ask Aiko if she's alright. I want to know how she is. I have to. Worries about Aiko plagued me all night, and she even invaded my dreams. And also, I have I now have apparently a body pillow of her. So... Nightmares. So you're, you're like... You've got a body pillow of someone who's dying. That's weird. I really am obsessed. But I love Aiko too much to simply stand by the wayside while she falls apart. With trembling fingers, I tap out my message. Why would you have several of the same poster? Seems weird. Hey, I'm not really sure what happened yesterday, but are you alright? I wait, staring at my phone. My fingers grip the cute pink case tightly. There's no reply. Does that mean Aiko's condition has gone from bad to worse? Was I too late? I send another message. My fingers feel slippery with anxious sweat. Really? Sweaty fingers? And I hit a few wrong buttons, but I'm in such a hurry I don't realize until I've sent it. Aiko, if there's nag nag thing wrong, please tell me. I'm really worried about it, you. Maybe I got a bit ahead of myself there. 
Deep breaths, Hannah. I'm sorry, I meant to say if there's anything <laughs> anything wrong, please tell me. I'll, I'm, I'm really worried about you. Anything. Time continues to tick by as noted, denoted by my cute alarm clock. But still. Nothing. No response. Oh god. My heart starts hammering in my chest. I feel sick. Maybe I'm really going to be sick. And then... Ah! All of a sudden my phone beeps. I stare at it eyes wide. Thank you for your concern. It means a good deal to me. I apologize if I made you worry last night. Some of my files were conflicted, but I was able to fix the problem. The breakdown of data will only get more pronounced, however. Soon I will be unable to apply superficial fixes to my data. Please help me as soon as you can. She hasn't even explained how to help! Thank goodness. I glance at my bed at the cute Aiko, Aiko plush toy nestling on my pillow and sigh in relief. I still have some time to get out my body pillow and inflate it. Right, it's your concert today, isn't it? Let's try and sort this out once and for all. If you could, I would be greatly in your debt. I have no idea how I can repay you for your kindness. Don't worry about repaying me until after I've helped, silly. You've already helped me more, you, more than you can imagine. No, she hasn't. Simp oh, right. Simply having somebody to talk to during these difficult times has been a great boon. You mean you don't have anybody at Lyric to talk to? I do, but I fear this is a complex problem only my original programmer can fix. I have attempted to tell them numerous times, but they assist, insist it's nothing the current tech team cannot handle. I consider sending another response to see if there's any more information I can garner when... Oh? Seems like I have another message. Go, go, gadget, Mako. Good morning, I trust you're up bright and early. That Makoto, she's so businesslike. It's a wonder she ended up so close to a person like Yasu. Speaking of which... I'm awake, but what about Yasu? I knew I could count on you. Unfortunately, our princess needs her beauty sleep. He, so he's not up? I called him ten minutes ago. His mother picked up. She said he tried to. she tried to shake him awake, but got no response. Sounds like Yasu- Wait, you met him yesterday! How do you know that's a thing? You've known him a- Oh, there we go. <laughs> you've known him a day and you've already figured him out? He seems like quite a simple person. Oh my god, don't send that to him. You can say that again. Though I can't see Makoto's face, I can imagine her rolling her eyes. The terse clipped way she types makes me giggle. And I'm not really the giggling type. I'm going to go over to his place in a few minutes and wake him up with a bucket of icy water. You live near each other? On the same street. He's like three houses down. It must be nice having a friend who lives so close. It would be if I weren't the responsible one. I've been waking him up for school ever since we were five. So you know all the best techniques? Anything that makes him scream is quite effective, yes. Huh, that sounds kind of ominous. Yeah, right? Do you want to meet up outside the convention center this morning? Around 8.30? That sounds fine. Will Yasu be awake by then? He better be. If not, he'll find himself sleeping for all eternity. Scary stuff. Makoto's pretty short, but I wouldn't want to incur her wrath. Better make sure I arrive on time, and I better make sure I go grab a drink. Sorry. <laughs> I need this. I'll be back. Um, you can listen to this lovely music, and um, I'm going to grab myself a little drinky. Back in a sec.
All right, I'm back. Oh, chat's very quiet today. If <laughs> I would very much, very much appreciate your your vocalness to help me survive this. <laughs> Being one hundred percent honest, I need I need you all to <laughs> to get in on this. Help me survive. As much as this bottle of Prosecco hopefully should. Anyway, while I'm opening it, I better make sure I arrive on time. Oh, thank God. It ended. Everyone is just really impressed by the writing. Uh, it is It is a lot of writing, isn't it? I am impressed by the sheer amount. It's only 7.30 in the morning. But the Coxai Center is already bustling with life. I love this mini bottle of Prosecco, it's so adorable. Some of the more diehard fans are already queuing by the <laughs> sorry. <laughs> queuing by the double doors. Clustered together in packs while they speculate. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're so impressed and you feel like cleaning the toilet. While they speculate about the events of the coming day. There's only <laughs> there we go. One thing on everyone's minds. Oh, look, it's firming. Can you see it firming? Probably not. There's only one thing on everyone's minds. One thing on their lips. Oh, the firm is coming out. That's so cool. The concert. Aiko's concert. The concert doesn't strictly belong to Aiko, of course. But she's all anybody cares about. She's Lyric's most popular idol, the face used on every flyer, and she's the main reason most people are here. How much further in this game? The author's kids are like, don't tell us a story, we'll go to bed. <laughs> the excitement in the air is almost palpable, but that has nothing to do with Hideki. That's such a weird segue. A green tea, two black coffees, and a cafe, cafe au lait. Green tea, two black coffees, and a cafe au lait. He walks down the street muttering this under his breath. <laughs> I don't really like Prosecco if I'm honest. This time, however, he's not alone. Why are you mumbling to yourself, Hideki? Have you been possessed? Ah, I'm fine. I forget things a lot in case you hadn't noticed, so I have a habit of repeating them. It's a trick my grandma told me. You've got your... is that your phone? Because if so, just put it on your phone. Jeez. It doesn't seem to help much. The offhand way Yuko says this would be painful if Hideki didn't agree with her. Not really, no. And I think you're missing something from your list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, my vanilla frappuccino. Ah, da -da -da -ba -da -ba. ah, you're right, I'm sorry, Yuko. Hideki almost feels obliged to start bowing. Almost. Forgetting drinks is a specialty of his. The members of the PR team take bets on which orders he'll mess up, but forgetting Yuko's drink seems almost sinful. She's the closest thing to a friend Hideki has at Lyric. Fortunately, Yuko doesn't seem to care. That he's a friend? <laughs> Instead, she starts giggling! Don't sweat it. Didn't you jot down everyone's orders on your phone? Yeah, I know, but I still worry I'll forget, force of habit. And you did forget! Yuko frowns, her dark eyes soften. Dark eyes? They're pink! You must be used to people scolding you, huh? A little. None of my teachers at school like me. Why is she doing that randy face? Oh, you poor baby. I thought it'd get better when I got older, but if anything, I think it might have gotten worse. Well, don't worry about it. That's what I'm here for. You mean you're going to support me? Of course, it's because I like you. Haha, <laughs> I think you have that the wrong way round. I'm a member of the PR team and you're an idol. It's my job to support you, quite literally. Yeah, but how can you support others when you can't even support yourself? Another good point. But if you really want to help... A mischievous, almost devilish smile quirks at the corners of Yuko's lips. How often have, has the author used this phrase, quirks at, quirks at the corners of their lips? Hideki's not entirely sure what that smile means, but he knows it doesn't bode well. I'm dying for a smirk. Can we stop off here? Yuko points 
towards a nearby convenience store without a hint of reserve. Hideki sighs. He's fond of Yuko because she's so bright and bubbly, but she can take things a little too far sometimes. How can an aspiring idol be so shameless? You know you can't, Yuko. We'll be back at the con in half an hour. We'll smell the smoke on you. Oh, come on, Hideki. Where's your sense of adventure? I don't want to have adventures. I want to keep my job. Why would you get in trouble? You're not my boss. No, but if I let you go off for a cigarette, I think management would definitely want a word. I guess you're... <laughs> Sorry, I don't like this drink. I guess you're right, but... Yuko pouts and kicks the ground with the tip of her shoe. The amazing adventure of lung cancer, right? That sucks. That's business. Since when did you care about business? I know I might not look it, but I can be responsible from time to time. He has to be when he's with Yuko. She might be better at memorizing drinks than he is, but her laissez-faire relationship with rules and regulations leaves much to be desired. It's so unfair. I don't see why smoking a few cigarettes should be, like, such a huge deal. You'll make yourself ill. Don't be ridiculous. Nobody's died from smoking a single cigarette. I get that, but... It's my body, isn't it? I should be able to do what I like. I agree, but that's part of being an idol, isn't it? Accepting that my own body isn't mine? That sounds a little callous. I wouldn't phrase it quite like that. It's more... Hmm. Hideki ponders, running a hand through his hair. It's too early in the morning to have a conversation like this. Particularly... Wow, this is getting slightly poignant! Particularly when he's trying to play a rather complex memory game, but he doesn't want to brush Yuko's, Yuko's concerns to one side. It's clear, though she acts so carefree, that that's not the full extent of her feelings. People are vastly more complex than they appear. This is going. To, this is talking directly to the audience here, I think. Well, Hideki considers with a wry smile, maybe he isn't. He's as simple as they come. Oh, he's the baddie, isn't he? When you become an idol, your fans start to see you, maybe not as their property, but they form a certain connection with you. You become special to them. If you do anything to damage their idolized image of you, it'd hurt your reputation, and that's their problem. So I need to act like a perfect angel, is that it? I wouldn't say you need to be perfect, but there is a, is a reason virtual idols are so popular. Oh my god! Wait, she's just accepting that? Bloody hell, I know, I know. Yuko sighs, despite being the bright sunshine, despite the bright sunshine, her expression is unusually glum. I know, like, idols have to sign contracts that sort of say they won't smoke and that sort of thing. People love virtual idols because they don't make mistakes. They can't. They're not programmed to. Regular girls like me, on the other hand. Sometimes we smoke or drink, we chew food weird, or we have annoying laughs, or we want to fall in love. It's a lot, lot easier for girls like me. It's a lot, lot easier. It's a lot, 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 lot. Do we say it's a lot, lot? I think we do, yeah. I would have said it's a much, much, it's much, much easier for girl. Anyway, it's a lot, lot easier for girls like me to disappoint our fans because we're only human. Even if, thank you for explaining that. Just explained it. Even if we're idols, we're still people like everybody else. I think our fans forget that sometimes. Yeah, you might have a point. I kind of hate virtual idols, you know? You do? Mmm, Naomi and Vespa, Sora and Tsubasa, and Aiko too? Hideki can't imagine anybody hating Aiko. The aforementioned idols that fell from Yuko's lips are acquired taste. Tastes, perhaps, tailored to fit specific audiences. A little like Nato. Aiko, however, is universal. She's one of Lyric's most popular idols for a reason. Aiko, with her short build, her fluffy hair, her pink motif, and her invitingly chubby cheeks, is utterly adorable. That, coupled with her antiquated way of speech and impeccable manners, only makes her more appealing. Yuko, however, is unmoved by Aiko's charms. She nods, eyes narrowed. Yeah, Aiko too. Aiko in particular. Can't stand her. But why? Because I'm not like that. I'm not a perfect girl, but how can I be perfect? I made a flesh of blood. She's made of wires and circuits. All of Lyric's idols malfunction today. Uh, if all of Lyric's idols malfunction today, I don't think I'd even care. In fact, it'd make me happy. Good riddance. Well, if it's any consolation, Hideki offers Yuko what he hopes is a comforting smile, though he's not sure how comforting it really is. 
Hideki's grandmother always said he smelled. Oh, stop it! Hideki's grandmother always said he smelled was comforting. His mother too. Though Hideki isn't good at a lot of things, math or science or remembering lists of drinks, he is apparently good at being a cheerleader. That's why he wanted to work in PR. There's nothing special about Hideki at all. He doesn't shine. He can't. But he can always try to help other people. I like you much, much more than I like Aiko. Oh, Hideki. A soft blush spreads across Yuko's cheeks. For a few moments, she looks every bit the, the shy, sweet maiden Hideki knows Yuko is not. You're just trying to flatter me, you lady killer, you. Oof. And then the illusion is shattered. It's shattered in the most effective manner possible, with a flick to the forehead. It hurts! What? Who does that? Top 10 compliments. Your grandmother always said your smile was comforting. <laughs> You're such a bully, Yuko. <laughs> I'm sorry, old habits die hard. But Hideki ponders as he rubs his forehead. He doesn't really mind. Yuko can bully him as much as she wants. It's worth it so long as she, he can see her smile. Another toxic relationship. <laughs> oh, speaking of... <laughs> Hey, Yoichi, where were you? You were gone, gone a while. Oh, getting jealous? I need to drink a lot of this. Don't count on it, I was just curious. Yoichi smirks. Now, now, Ken, you can be honest about your feelings with me. I know it must be lonely sitting here all on your own. It's aggravating. Sayuri went over to talk to the sound guys 20 minutes ago, and I still don't know where the hell Hideki is with my coffee. You know how Sayuri, she's very thorough. And Hideki? He's probably trying to sweet talk Yuko, and for once he has the right idea. Wait. I'd rather be off flirting with pretty young idols right now, but alas. Why would you say young? You're the oldest person there. That's creepy. But alas, Ryoichi groans and cracks his back? I can't eke, I can't eek out a living on the smells of pretty girls alone. You're disgusting and you love it. So what did the tech team say? Did you get a status update? Ah well, about that. Ryoichi frowns and presses one hand against his forehead. It's rare that his forehead wrinkles in such a manner. And it reminds Kenji with a jolt just how much older than him Ryoichi is. Wrinkly old man. Ryoichi jerks around so often it's easy to forget he's in his early 40s? Kazuki said he did another check on Aiko and, he, and she seems to be stable enough. Plot twist, this was written by an AI. <laughs> Seems to be. I know it's not the most reassuring news, but he was convinced she'd be fine. The show can go on then? The show must go on. We've already sold all the tickets. There's no way we can call it off now, no matter what shape our leading lady's in. I hope she doesn't glitch out on stage. That wouldn't be very good for PR. An unmitigated disaster. It'd be like the, the Yukari situation all over again. You mean that Osaka Idol? That's right. You know what happened to that company, don't you? That was quite a while back, and my memory isn't quite what it used to be, but I think I can guess. They went out of business, right? Bingo! Oh, so that's why they're not here anymore. Fantastic, this is just what I needed. Yoichi runs a hand through his hair. He looks more troubled than Kenji has seen him since, well, ever. This event, though not a particularly large one, has taken a toll on the PR team as a whole. It doesn't help that two members are out of commission, and the Eichel situation on top of everything else is only adding to the stress. Let's hope we can trust the tech team to do their job. Mr. Himura is... Mr. Himura is pretty competent, right? It should be fine. I'd feel better if we had some sort of backup plan there. Actually, Kazuki gave me a little something yesterday. It's one of the worst early birthday presents I've ever received, but I guess it's the thought that counts. What is it? Let me get it out. Oh, not here, not here. Noichi digs through a messenger bag slung over his shoulder and procures what appears to be a tablet. Kenji frowns. That's our backup plan? Yeah. Aiko's files have all been copied on this. 
Kazuki told me to plug it into the stage system during the concert. And if any inconsistencies in Aiko's data develop, it should automatically patch them? Or something. Or something, right. Hey, I'm no tech guy. If my explanation's not good enough for you, for you, go track down Kazuki. I think I'm fine for now. Despite your less than impressive understanding of technology, I understand the gist. Ryoichi smiles and slaps Kenji on the side with the palm of his hand. <laughs> I knew you would, that's why I'm entrusting this to you. Kenji saw that coming from a while a mile away, but he still tuts. <laughs> Being responsible for such an important, no doubt expensive, and decidedly top secret piece of lyric equipment is rather daunting, but who else is up to the task? If Shina was here, she could take care of it, but Shina isn't here, and neither Ryoichi nor Sayuri have the technical knowledge Kenji does. What a pain. Fine, fine. I'll take it. I'm expecting you to make it up for me up to me though. Tonight in the bedroom. Oh, there we go. Don't worry, Ken. I'll be sure to make it up to you all night long. Kenji scowls. Oh, give that here. He snatches the tablet from Ryoichi with a little more strength than he probably should. You're feisty today, aren't you? That's what happens when I don't have my coffee. What the hell is Hideki doing? Kenji searches about the convention hall. Not that he needs to search very hard. There's still a good hour before the gates open. The only people milling around are staff members. There's no sign of Hideki or his coffee. There is, however. Hello, you two. I apologize for being so late. I had business to take care of. Ah. Kenji pauses. His mouth, his mouth hangs open, limp and slack, but that isn't because of Sayori. It's the person standing next to her. Get your own coffee if that's if it's that important. I know, right? It's none other than none other than his fiance, Misaki. Um, uh, hello there, husband, Misaki. Kenji tries to choke out her name. It sticks in his throat, making him wince. He knows why. Guilt. But what are you doing here? Shouldn't I be here? No, no, that isn't it. I'm not saying that at all. I just wanted to know why. Um, I was talking to Sayuri yesterday. She said you were pretty understaffed since um, Maira got sick and she and us at a wedding. I thought you seemed a little stressed too, so I decided to volunteer. Sayuri got it all sorted out for me, even though it was on such short notice. But wasn't that nice of her? If you're that nervous talking to your own fiancé, it's probably not meant to be. Yes, um, very nice. Kenji glances at Sayuri. His eyes are narrowed and mistrustful. He can think of many words to describe Sayuri's actions, but nice is not the descriptor that first comes to mind. Sneaky. Underhanded. Suspicious. Uh, um... Maybe I should have told you about it first. I mean, don't they live together? But I wanted it to be a surprise. I, um... I thought it would make you happy, darling. Darling. The word feels like a slap against Kenji's cheek. Kenji opens his mouth, trying and failing to say something, anything, when. Well, I don't know about Kenji here, but I'm certainly happy to see you. Here you are? Damn straight, Sayuri wasn't exaggerating. We're practically drowning in work up here, up to our ears. Any help we can get is appreciated, especially from such a pretty lady. You're projecting a bit there, Kenji, <laughs> yeah, right? You're just flattering me. You wound me, milady. I mean every word. Oh, please. For once, Kenji shares Sayori's sentiments. Though he has an abundance of charm, Ryoji can be quite smarmy when he puts his mind to it. There comes a point when enough is enough. <laughs> Misaki, however, seems to have a different opinion. She's giggling. Why is she giggling? Maybe it's because Kenji never compliments her anymore. He hardly even looks at her. Why are they getting married? So, so, team, is there anything you want me to do? We're still setting up for the concert. It might be a bit too technical for you. It's definitely too technical for me, but... Hmm. Ryoichi strokes his chin with his fingers, thinking before... Ah! Idea! <laughs> what? <laughs> What's this dialogue? <laughs> ah! Idea! What? <laughs> Tell me, Miss Horie, how do you like your coffee? And I'd like a vanilla frappuccino, please. Is that all, sir? Says Yuichiro. <laughs> it should be. 
Hideki glances over his shoulder at Yuko, his lovely assistant. Is that all, Yuko? The domesticity of the situation amuses Yuko, and she starts to giggle despite herself. That's all, honey. Honey! <laughs> Don't worry about it too much. Hideki's face flushes bright red. Oh, my nose is so itchy. Sorry, I've just been with the buns, and their hay is something I'm allergic to. Uh, when Yuichiro turtles up the bill and asks for money, Hideki's fingers tremble. He almost drops the coins all over the floor. Very smooth. Hideki's ready to hand the money over when a sudden beeping from his pocket makes him pause. Who could that be? He presses the money on the counter and fishes for his phone, glancing at the screen. A message from Ryoichi. Just great. And can you add a green tea latte on the end there too? We didn't need to have that whole scene, honestly. It takes around 20 minutes for me to arrive at the convention center. I worry I'm going to be too early, but when I arrive I spot Makoto, I spot Makoto and y Yasu almost immediately. They're standing by the entrance, wearing the same outfits they wore yesterday. Gross. A small robot and a tall witch girl. An interesting combination if ever there was one. Makoto nods her head at me when I approach. I expect Yasu to wave energetically, but instead he leans against Makoto's shoulder, one hand pressed against his mouth. There are bags under his eyes and his skin is pasty. At least I'm not the only one. Hey, Hana, I'm glad you could make it. I bow in greeting. Makoto frowns. There's no need to be so formal, you know. How does she know she's... Fr We're not that much older than you. It's hard to believe Makoto is older than me at all, given she's so short, but I don't mention that. My favorite part was a green tea latte <laughs> We're gonna need to, at the end of this, say what our favorite scene was, because I don't think any of these are gonna be, you know, particularly good. She probably gets comments about her height or lack of it all the time. I'm sorry, force of habit. Well, it's nice that you mind your manners, unlike a certain someone. Makoto jabs Yasu in the stomach with her elbow. Oof. Hold up, last time I watched the stream of this, Cav just entered a con. Please don't tell me that this whole time Cav has still just been in the con. They went home very briefly. And this is the second day of the con. But it's the start of the second day of the con, unfortunately. Yasu whimpers and doubles over. His lower lip trembles. Not so hard, Mako. Think about the baby! There is no baby. You don't know that. It's literally not possible. Not with that attitude. What the hell is this dialogue? You don't have a uterus. I'll make one. What the? Out of what? Why is this conversation continuing? I don't know. Cardboard? Please. No, we don't need... We can just... Let's just... Cut to the convention center. This conversation has just gotten really awkward. Makoto sighs. And why aren't you saying good morning to Hana? You're being incredibly rude. Oh, it's fine. I don't mind. I couldn't get much sleep last night either. I know, right? I couldn't stop thinking about the concert. Before I knew it, it was 3 a.m. already. Idiot. You just don't understand my maiden's heart, Muckle. I giggle. I can't help myself. I laugh a lot more than usual when I'm around these two. I thought that she doesn't normally giggle. Like, she made a big deal of saying, Oh, it made me giggle, even though I... <laughs> ah! Oh, sorry, that I poured out some Prosecco and it's, uh... It almost overflowed there. Let me pour out the rest of this bottle. This tiny bottle, incidentally. I wish it was bigger. Sigh. Oh, Prosecco, we hardly, hardly knew ye. Ask Makoto if she's looking forward to the concert. Ask Yasu if he's excited to see Aiko. Why can't I do both? Well, I haven't really talked much to Yasu today. Probably for the best, it's not bigger, yeah. Are you excited to see Aiko? Well, I'm drinking it as quickly as I can. I'm not a huge Aiko fan myself, but I think it'll be pretty good. Mako and I have been to a few lyric concerts before, and they've all been great. Yasu sighs, rubbing his arms with his hands. Ah, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. He's being a drama queen. He says he was excited, but he was probably up all night watching children's anime or something. CHILDREN'S ANIME! Like you're one to talk, little Miss Gadget Mako. Anyway, Makoto cuts through Yasu's mutinous comment like a knife through butter. 
The lines are going to be out of control today, so we should take care not to get separated. Roger! Also, I checked the itinerary on the, on the Lyric website this morning, and our volunteer shift is early. That means we'll have enough time to get good spots for the concert. Okay, that sounds like a plan. I follow my, com <laughs> itchy nerves. follow my companions to the convention center. They chat together, or to be more precise, Yasu yawns while Makoto scolds him. But I'm only half paying attention to what they're saying. I can't stop thinking about Aiko. Yasu, wow, it's not fair. I want it. I want... Gothic Lolita, oof, 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 I apologize, Madam Cute Witch, but the life I regret to tell you isn't fair at all. I don't know what accent that was. No, no! Yasu takes a staggering step backwards and holds onto his stomach like he's just been shot. Defeated, completely defeated. Did you run out of lives? Exactly, and there aren't any checkpoints. That's how it should be. I don't like all the hand-holding they do in new games. They're way too lenient in infinite lives. What the hell? Life isn't that easy. Oh my god. You know, most people play video games to escape from the harsh realities of life. Makoto draws herself up to her full height, which admittedly is not very high. She keeps saying that and plants her hands on her hip hips. That's an entirely inaccurate outlook. If video games are too easy, they lose their challenge. They're meant to provide a series of difficult tasks so you feel fulfilled when you're finally able to complete them. Ha ha ha, well, but I always knew you were a glutton for punishment. I must be or I wouldn't hang out with you. Anyway, it's just common knowledge. All the best video games are on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Companies have really dropped the ball the last 20 years. Oh, uh, that time you tried to make me play Omega Man, that was a nightmare. Oh, Omega Man 1 was a nightmare. But it was character building, right? Yes, it pelts. I can't see Makoto's face, but she's probably smirking. Mm. Just make the concert happen. Uh, sorry. I meanwhile stand there a little bemused. I thought Makoto would be irritated by Yasu's antics, particularly as, as his over-the-top declarations of ultimate despair trademark are drawing some quite peculiar looks. But if anything, she seems amused. In fact, I think she's actually egging him on. I guess Makoto has a silly side to her too. Hmm. Perhaps this was this is her way of letting off steam. We were on volunteer duty for two hours this morning and the entrance hall was packed. I came here to watch Cav play a visual novel and I'm already irritated by this game. I know you and me both. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, hmm. <laughs> the men's hall is similarly packed, but at least we're not in charge of ushering people through the double doors, distributing pamphlets, or helping lost children reunite with their families anymore. We'll probably get there after five to six days worth of day two. Ugh! Ugh! Let's let this end! Anyway, you should just accept your loss, Yasu. This woman saw that dojinchi first. That's right! The gothic Lolita, who has been watching Makoto and Yasu's exchange with mild amusement, holds the slender comic book to her chest. Hey there, Arya! Good morning to you! You gave it a good shot, kid, but find us keepers. I'm gonna burp, sorry. Excuse me. I, I know, but I just can't accept that. Yasu stabs a finger in the gothic elitist direction. His eyes are blazing. Nobody's a bigger fan of Sora and Tsubasa than I. I? Since when did you talk in such a self-important way? Since now. When I first laid my eyes upon this cute dojinshi, my heart started to pound inside my chest. Oh my god. I knew from the moment it entered my peripheral vision. We were meant to be together. It will only accept me as a master. That may be the case, but I picked it up first. <laughs> Chip! Yasu clicks his tongue against the roof of his roof of his mouth and turns his head to one side. Well, Yarna, this is why I've got a drink. And I thought that would work too. You really are a naive boy. You should come back in a decade or so. Maybe then you'll be able to best me. No, no, it's not fair. Well, um, oh, this is a new person. The vendor glances between the two warring factions with an awkward expression. So the story behind me playing this game is that uh, a few months ago when the bundle, the uh, Ichio bundle for racial justice and equality came out, I did a stream where I sampled all the original games um, on that bundle. And this was one of them, and it made me very sad, and 
then people were saying that I should play it. So then I decided to make it a community challenge to see if people really wanted me to play it. And apparently they did. And so now I'm playing it. Yes, yeah, bad life choices by all of us. We all do. This is the, this is the playthrough you deserve, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> you say that, but neither of you have paid for the door, didn't you? Yet. Exactly. Yasu yeah, procures his purse from his pocket. It's a very cute purse, just decorated with a star motif, and pulls out a few crumpled notes. Take oh, that's new. Take my money. Take it all. Ah ha ha. I appreciate the offer, but there's far too much money there, sir. I can't accept that much, and even if I did, I'd feel guilty. Oh, come on, why won't you let me bribe you? If you say it like that, it'll make me feel worse. Come on, Yasu, you gave it your best shot, but you have to know when to give up. I didn't know what I was voting for, and I also thought it said Aldo. <laughs> okay. Yarne, if you're interested in sort of like seeing what games are on there, uh, you can look into my in my VODs and I've got a collection of all the streams from the game and you can like skim through um, and see if there are any games that, that strike your fancy. <sighs> I'm also going to be streaming the rest of the games, like the, the tier editions uh, later on as well. Um, how c yes, it is shameless self-promotion. This is my channel. I do what I want. <laughs> Didn't you stay up for 18 hours straight until you finally defeated Dracula and Castlemania? I think Cass' favorite was the musical play game. Oh yeah, that one was fantastic. We gotta finish playing that. That was that and this is this. I don't follow. Unlike real life, video games have win conditions. Bleh. Sweet Lolita, I must say, I am rather curious. The gothic Lolita's companion, an uncommonly tall girl. Why are they always uncommonly tall? Dressed in shades of pale blue, finally deigns to speak. Her voice is a little deeper than I expected. Oh, what? It's going to be a per... Uh, uh. You don't even like Tsubasa and Sora, Sadako. Why are you being so stubborn? The gothic Lolita, her name is Sadako? Titters. She looks supremely pleased with herself. Her smell is even more mocking than a Halloween pumpkin's. You could say it was a whim, my dear Hotaru. Sounds to me like you're causing a scene for the sake of it. Well, why not? This cute little boy needs to learn a lesson. Ah, I see. You're just a sadist. Isn't that right? Exactly. This is an outrage. I won't lose to the likes of you. You have no love in your heart, lady. Those who don't understand the super cute appeal of Tsubasa and Sora don't deserve to breathe the same air as I. I finished my Prosecco and I haven't drunk enough. Isn't that going a bit far? I'm a fan of Aiko, but I would never say a non-Aiko fan doesn't deserve to breathe air. Air is a basic human right. How dare Yasu? I feel like, I feel like I'm no longer friends with him. That was just a trifle too far. This is the origin of Gamergate. Oh, oops, what have I done? It's not going too far at all. If anything, it isn't going far enough. Why is this scene happening? I don't care! The scene has been going on, like, it's just a little squabble! I don't give a shit, this is not gonna be relevant to the actual plot at all! It's just like, oh, look at them going off and doing things! I don't give a shit! <laughs> just ignore Yasu, he's used to getting his own way. So the plot here, in case you're, you're new to this, is that um, the main character, Hana, uh, has been recruited by Aiko, this idol, this virtual idol, who's actually an android and not virtual at all, has been recruited by her to, to find her lead programmer, because her lead programmer has gone, has mysteriously disappeared. And so they're going to try and, I don't know, find something at the conventions. Excuse me, I burped. None of these are main characters, no. Surely it will be as important as a green tea latte, definitely. <laughs> Ugh. So it's nothing more than a spoiled brat? Undoubtedly, unfortunately. I mean... I wouldn't say he's a spoiled brat, but he's just... I'm gonna agree with Makoto because I defended Yasu last time. You might have a point. Perhaps this would be a good lesson for him after all. 
But we all have to grow up sometime. Hey, you guys. Yester glances between us. His eyes are downcast and almost seem to threaten tears. Why are you all picking on me? I'm feeling distinctly outnumbered. Perhaps you should take it as a sign, Yasu. Let it go. Hmph, I bet you're doing this because I'm the only guy. You're just ganging up on me. Now, now, try and calm down. Makoto sighs and glances at the two Lolitas on the pol uh, apologetically. She bows her head, almost like a parent trying to excuse the actions of their unruly child. Yasu sometimes says things without thinking. Just ignore him. I intend to. I wish I could, but seeing him squirm is so much fun. Come on, Sadako, you've had your fun. You should hurry up and buy the dojinchi or we won't be able to get a good spot for the concert. You mean Aiko's concert? That's right. There's only half an hour to go, and I wouldn't be surprised if the stage is crowded already. Good point. Some Yes, go! Just go! Good point. Some of the more diehard fans started staking out spots two hours in advance. Two hours? It's not that unusual. I'm not the biggest Aiko fan. I prefer Naomi and Vespa, but I've been en to enough events like this to know. Last minute battles for the best spaces can be rather rowdy. I wince and look down at my feet. I don't know if I like the sound of that. I'm not a big people person at the best of times. Yes, so you keep saying. Being in the crowded vendors alley is bad enough, but being squashed up around the stage like a sardine in a tin, surrounded by chanting fans and the smell of body odor sounds even worse. That's what a concert is! Oh my god. I think there's a ticking clock and the AI might die and they're arguing about tea and video games. <laughs> yeah, but I need to get to the stage as quickly as possible. I can't miss this concert. I go. Oh dear, now I feel like a bad guy. Satoko thighs, sighs. She looks thoughtful. If I had my way, I wouldn't mind playing around with Miss Cute Witch a little longer, but it seems this young missus over here is pretty anxious to get to the concert, and apparently my sadism only applies to men. Is it that obvious? Quite. You must love Aiko a lot, and because I'm a sadist, I'm going to let you go. I, I, I guess. Tell you what, I don't really want this dodging, so I'll let your friend have it. You will? So I can finally sell it? That's right, here you go, a present. Sadako hands the dojinchi over, which is now more than a little crumpled after being cradled in her arms. Yasu, however, doesn't seem to care. He takes it tenderly, as though it's a newborn baby, and all but embraces it. If this were a cartoon, his eyes would fill with love hearts. And because I slowed you down, I can make amends. I'll try and get you guys good spaces for the concert, Kate. Okay? Wait! Why are you being nice all of a sudden? Can you really do that? Of course, you should never under underestimate the power of the Wakahisa sisters, known, also known as Parasol. She gives me a wink. My heart flutters. Me and Hotaru have connections. It'll be fine, I promise. What? The two girls in Lolita garb are just as good as their word. When they enter the concert hall, Yasu, Makoto, and I trotting along behind them, the crowds assembled around about the stage seemed to part like the Red Sea. Are they the Wakahisa sisters? It's Parasol. I must have missed them yesterday. Hotaru Kyun, be my wife! A wife. Kyun? In any event, the startling popularity of our newfound companions lets us cut right to the front of the stage with relative ease. Why is it always such a big reveal when it turns out that someone dressed as a woman is, is like, a man? <laughs> I, I, I don't get why it's such a, ooh. Who cares? Anyway, we'll gladly move aside. I'll do anything for you. I'd even kill a man if you asked. Oh my god. The Red Sea, like how Moses parted it with a Beyblade. I'd rather watch a gnome called Norm at this moment. Wow, that's 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 pretty strong coming from you. Sadako Nyan, let's have a child together. Nyan? I had no idea you guys were so well known. I prefer the term girls or women. Fees or Mechen if you insist on being European. But that is correct. Wait, what? Oh, you guys, right. Sadako and I have quite a large influence in the Lolita community, particularly her and Fukuoka. Though looking at Sadako, I can't imagine why. What? Huh? Why not? I should think he goes without saying. Humph, meanie. What? S what? Sadako, Sadako shoves Sotaru in the side, but there's no malice to her actions. I think she's joking! <laughs> oh my god. Ugh! So what do you think, honey? Uh, excuse me? You heard me. Honey! 
Sorry, I need to I need to have a little lie down. Mm. I don't understand how this dialogue is meant to be charming or whatever it's meant to be. I don't think there's anything sweet about Oh my god! Oh contraire, but I digress. Stop! She's like 14! Leave her alone! You know, dropping random French phrases into your speech doesn't make you sound cultured. If anything, it makes you sound confused. Ugh, her hush. Another dig in the ribs. Is the view of the stage good enough? Are you happy with our current vantage point? Oh yes, thank you so much for your help. It's no exaggeration either. <laughs> Why is this person scowling at me? What have I done? These two girls, or women, or fee or Machen, have been incredibly helpful. Especially considering they're virtual strangers. It's only a matter of moments with no pushing or shovel. Uh, in only a matter of moments with no pushing or shoving, we were able to get right up to the front of the stage. I'm so close to Aiko, I could probably touch her if I wanted to. But that would probably be quite a jarring experience. Oh, I've never touched a hologram before. I'm not sure what would happen if I tried. But I, I thought they were androids? Make up your mind, author! Are they virtual? Are they holograms? Are they androids? I'm not sure what would happen if I tried, but I doubt it would end well. <sighs> would my fingers slide right through? That's weird. Eh <laughs> heh It's no problem, honey. It's the least I could do. Why is my nose so itchy? I hate it. I hate allergies. Hey, yes, it pounce. He grabs hold of my arm and clings tightly. He looks rather willowy with slender arms and legs, but his stature is more muscular than mine. I don't think he realizes just how much strength he's using. I found her first, you hear? If anyone, if anybody gets to call Hana, Hana, honey, it's me. You've never called me honey once before. And if you did, I sue you for sexual harassment. But why are you making me out to be the bad guy? She... Ugh. Is Kev allergic to visual novels? I didn't realize it was that bad. I feel like that might be the case. He stabs a finger at Sadako. It's the one using all these fancy French words and trying to flirt with our cute little Hana. Sadako raises an eyebrow. You met her yesterday. Your Hana? Yes, our Hana. Just start the concert! I don't give a shit about anyone here! Are you three close friends by any chance? No, not really. I met them yesterday, but our bonds are strong enough to last for a lifetime. I think you're taking this a bit too far. Yes, he gets like this. He's very overprotective. Sadako can be quite overprotective too. I understand. You, you do? Mmm, it can be quite an irksome trait, but I believe it shows you care. You must have quite a large heart. A smirk tugs at the corners of Hotaru's lips. Isn't it like... It quirks around the corners, because that's what uh, you've been saying this entire story so far. But at the same time, but the same cannot be said of your brain. <gasps> Why, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. No, I don't think it was supposed to be. Hotaru is the undisputed champion of sick burns. <laughs> Idle, a traffic jam simulator. <laughs> the five of us chat idly for a while, just killing, for, just killing time until a sudden hush falls upon the crowd. Thank God! The lights in the convention center have dimmed. It looks like it's time. I was so engrossed in my idle conversation. Ah, <laughs> A-I-D-R-L. A? Idle conversation? But the main event is going to start now. It's time for the person we've all been waiting for. <laughs> She's going to take the stage. Lyric Core's most successful diva. You know her. I know her. What? Of course you know her. You're the announcer. Heck, even your grandparents know her? This little cutie has been entrancing the nation ever since her debut two years ago. And she's here now for your enjoyment. Please, give it up for Aiko. The lights on stage flicker. And that same song's going to start again, I'm pretty sure. Then all of a sudden... No, it's a different one. There she is. Aiko. In the flesh. Well, flesh probably isn't the right word to use. This isn't Aiko's flesh. It's a hologram. Oh, thanks for making that clear. I, I, I was a little bit confused there, but now you've fleshed out the situation. 
Aiko has a real physical body. How else would she be able to pose for friends? Wait, didn't you say she was a hologram just before? Oh! How else would she be able to pose for photo shoots or appear in interviews, but her physical body never appears on stage during performances? Right, I see. Aiko isn't a human being, but a robot. She's a very expensive, highly complex doll that was built to perform. She never appears in person at her concerts because the bright lights could make her overheat and the loud noises of the crowd could damage, in her, damage her auditory sensors. It's the same for all virtual idols. Virtual idols perform in a rather unique manner. Their physical body performs to their, si their fans in isolation. In a safe and quiet environment with numerous technicians on hand in case of an emergency. How do you know how to respond to the crowd if it's like a quiet environment? Yeah, like, why bother having a physical AI model in the first place? This feels like social commentary without social commentary. The fans, meanwhile, are treated to a holographic image of this performance projected onto the screens. Basically, the image of Aiko we are seeing is a transmission of Aiko's real body. I don't entirely understand everything. The explanations I found online were either too sparse or too complex, but that's about the gist of it. It doesn't diminish the overall effect. I know it's just a holographic image, but my breath still catches in my chest. Isn't she adorable, ladies and gentlemen? Oh my god, if anyone talked about me like that, I would get so... I would be so grumpy. I think you'll all agree, nobody makes them like Lyric. Nothing can compare to her style or beauty. Oh, I'm starting to get a mo Oh, oh, I hate this. Sorry, like, I, I very much just like fan culture as it is. But... <sighs> The announcer, over the top though they are, they're clearly having a lot of fun with this, isn't entirely wrong. I'm starting to get emotional too. I'm getting emotional because... She really is pretty! This is the first concert I've been to! Well, considering that you've established before that you just bought, like, a... body pillar of Aiko, I think you're probably gonna be going for this. Hey there, Eric. She's so pretty. I can't take my eyes off her. Her hair is pale pink. No, no, it's not. Her cheeks are soft and chubby. Her thighs are plump and generously rounded. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't. Sorry. No. No. Okay, no. You don't talk about... No. This is the first concert I've been... Oh, my God. Sorry, I need... I need to... Sorry, can you give me a minute? <laughs> I need to... I'll be back... I'll be back in a sec, that made me feel physically ill. Okay, we're back. Um, yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't succeed uh, with this challenge, but you won, and now here we are. Uh, like I say, <laughs> we all brought this on ourselves, you know? No one is more to blame than anyone else. <laughs> I must admit, I was playing Hades with Kava in the next screen, and that thigh line in the game did shock me. Yeah, oh, It's the first concert I've been to with friends. Makoto, Yasu, Sarako, Hotaru. I'm happy I met all of them. Why would you comment on, on someone's thighs like that? You're a 14 year old girl. It's weird. I didn't even know what thighs were when I was four. Anyway, I'm happy that we're all here together and I'm, and I'm able to share my love of Aiko with them. That really is something special. Um, hello everybody. It's a pleasure to stand on this stage before you. I have been practicing long and hard for this concert, so, um... Well, let's have a good time together, all right? Why is she nervous? I can recommend games to cover some dubious content and they still wouldn't feel as sick as I did with this game. Please don't recommend those games! <laughs> I 
think I'm good with this, honestly. The crowd explodes. <laughs> but not literally, though. I bet you that's what it's going to say after this. It's going to say, but not literally, though. What I mean was that was a metaphor for the sound and how people erupted into applause. Cheers, shrieks, and squeals fill the concert hall. It's so loud I worry my eardrums are going to burst. Um, Aiko, I love you. You're my number one bae. You go, girl. Show them what you've got. The girl sitting next to me, meanwhile, seems to be having some sort of religious awakening. She's sniffling, eyes beating with tears while mumbling. This is the best day of my life. And I thought I loved Aiko. This experience has really opened my eyes. Yeah, you're not the only one with an Aiko body pillow, apparently. My ears, too. It's so loud. You said that before! A collective chant of Aiko, Aiko, Aiko starts to circulate around the room like a contagious disease. That's an apt simile, like a contagious disease. You're like, I would have gone with like wildfire or something that wasn't as gross. Even Yasu and Sadako, who were busy bickering, have put aside their differences to cheer on Lyric's poster girl. Aiko, 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 Aiko. And they're not the only ones. Aiko, Aiko, oh my god, do we have to get it from everyone? Aiko, Aiko. The ever sensible Makoto and the cool aloof Hotaru have somehow become swept up in the sea of excitement. Maybe it's inevitable. When you're at an event like this with so many people, it's hard not to get swept away. I think I read about it before online somewhere. They call it mob mentality. When you're in a big group, people are more likely to get swept away by the crowd. Glow sticks have been snapped around me. They're all bright pink, Aiko's signature color. Meanwhile, the crowd continues to chant. Oh, we gonna... What are they chanting, though? Please, tell me more! Aiko! 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 But I don't feel like, oh, it's, we're not going to go through each of the characters again. But I don't feel like chanting. I don't feel like clapping. I don't feel like dancing. Da, 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 da. I don't even feel like cheering. All I can do is stare. I remain silent, rooted to the spot, incapable of, incapable of movement. Don't you dare go back into the Aiko so pretty part. Even when the background music smell, swells from the, smells from the speakers and Aiko launches into her first song. Don't say it! Okay, good. It's a song everybody knows. Sunset Kisses. Is that the end of the concert? The thank you! Aiko stands on the stage, hands clasped together at her front. The music of her first song, Sunset Kisses, has died away and so too has the clamor of the crowd. Hundreds upon hundreds of eyes are fixed upon Aiko. They're all hanging on her every word. She said hello. No, she said thank you. Um, as you probably know, that song was my summer single. Oh, wait, what? It's Sunset... Oh, yeah, I guess. Sorry, I thought it was Summer Kisses. As you probably know, that song was my summer single, released last July. It was composed by the very talented Mr. Ozu, and I owe a large amount of the song's success to him. Over the past couple of years, I have been very lucky to garner so much support from lovely people like yourselves. When I think about all the people who listen to my music, buy my CDs, and travel to events like this to support me, it makes me feel emotional. What is love? At the same time, however, it makes me feel somewhat guilty. I know my success is not down to me alone. So when you applaud for me today, know that you're not just applauding for me. You're applauding the programmers who put me together, the composers who created my music. The choreographers who crafted my dance moves, the generated, the dedicated PR team who advertised these events, and all the lighting technicians, engineers, and stagehands who make this possible. I am grateful to them all for making me who I am today. As does I'm grateful to you for your support. It is because of my unerring gratitude, <sighs> gratitude that I continue to sing, so I hope you will continue to stand by my side. Talking about, hey now, hey now. Wait, no, I, sorry, I'm, wait, talking about, we're talking about, yeah, 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 I know, I, I, I get it now, we're talking about, hey now, hey now, hey now, hey now, I go, I go on date, very good, <laughs> it took me a while, the way Aiko talks really is cute, it's a lot more formal than you'd expect from a modern idol, and it's even more peculiar when you caress contrast her rigid manners with her status as a robot. She's a cutting-edge android that could come straight from a science fiction movie, but she talks like a little old lady. And anyway, I imagine you didn't come here to hear me rambling. 
We love your rambling icon. Oh my god, you're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, she, she's so cute. My heart can't handle it. If you need to collapse, feel free to collapse on me. Ah, you really are a gentleman after all. Yasu, a gentleman? Don't make me laugh. Hmm, I can understand why Aiko is so popular, but she doesn't appeal to my my sense of aesthetics. Thank you for your patience and for bearing with me. I, I promise I won't talk nearly so much. There were just one or two things I needed to get off my chest. That being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of the concert. The next song is another one you should all know. Feel free to sing along if you want. It's called Lost in... Oh no, it's his theme song. Aiko takes her position on stage, one hand on her hip and her head turned to one side. Are we going to watch this? Once more, the background music begins to play. Like Sunset Kisses, this is another cheery song, but it's even more upbeat. Even a gloomy girl like me can't help but smile when I hear it. This song has woken me up every morning for the last year. I've heard it more times than I can count, but I haven't grown tired of it yet. I don't know if I ever will. There's a reason this song was so incredibly popular when it first came out. Even the Stoi Kotaro is tapping her fingers against the inside of her arm in time with the music. I don't move. I can't. All I can do is stare. Oh no, we got the lyrics as well! I never- like this isn't a good song. I never thought this day would come, but finally... Finally. I can... I can hear these songs I love so much, but that I've heard so many times in real life. It's so amazing, it almost feels like a dream. I can't believe it! If it weren't for the crowd swarming around me, their elbows bumping against mine, I'd be almost tempted to believe this is some kind of dream. But none of my dreams have ever been quite this vivid. She's a hologram! As the music builds, swelling to a crescendo, so do the crowd's cheers. I go! I go! I go! Aiko, you're so cute! I thought you'd pledged your heart to Sora and Tsubasa. My heart is a cheap and fickle thing. I'll do anything for the right price. I'll keep that in mind. What a shameless man. Who cares if I'm shameless? At least I admit it. I don't know if that makes it any better. I believe it makes it even worse. Hey, you could at least try sticking up for me, Mako. I could, but I don't want to encourage you. I'm just trying to look out for you. Sometimes, Mako, you're even worse than my mom. Maybe if your mom was a little less flighty, you wouldn't be quite as aggravating. Just to hurry up! I want plot! Hey, you guys, pipe down. I'm trying to listen to the music. I didn't come here to listen to your lover's quarrel. L -l -l lovers but we're not! Me and Mako? No way! I'd rather cut off my arm with a spoon! I think that's supposed to be my line. And my spoon! Makoto and Yasu continue, continue to bicker playfully, but I can barely hear them. Oh, I much prefer Subnautica. Subnautica is, a, Subnautica is a great game, it's just bloody terrifying. I know the crowd is surrounding me, and I hear their cheers and shouts, and I, but I've tuned it all out. All I can focus on is Aiko. Her voice is clear and strong. She doesn't fumble over any of the lyrics. She doesn't forget any of the dance moves. She's programmed. She's perfect. Everything about her is perfect. Aiko! 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 With every twist and turn, I wonder if she'll make a mistake, but Aiko executes everything flawlessly. I miss those Subnautica streams. streams. They were a lot of fun. Aiko! 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 She's flawless. Aiko! 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 So flawless, in fact, I feel myself getting sucked in. I'm letting go. I'm forgetting myself. Aiko! 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 Sean narrating this visual novel would make for some nice juxtaposition, definitely. I'm cheering too. I can't stop myself. You'd think you would have been cheering from the beginning. You look like you're having fun. It's hard not to. She really draws you in. She acts so earnest. It's hard not to support her. I imagine that's where her appeal comes from. Don't analyze her appeal so coldly, Hotaru. Just enjoy the moment. I apologize. But I think Hotaru has a point. Aiko is popular because despite being a virtual idol, she's vulnerable. She speaks anxiously, she blushes when she receives compliments, and she's quick to praise others before herself. That's why I want her to succeed. I want her so, so badly to succeed. Oh, thank God. Uh-oh! 
which is why the sudden moment of shock hurts me hurts even more. Aiko twists her leg during a spin and falls forwards. Oh, the song started again. She hits the ground hard. The song's still going. Her nose bumps against the stage. But that isn't right. She didn't fall on the stage. This is only a hologram. Her physical body is somewhere else, surrounded by a tech team who can help her in a worst case scenario. But that doesn't change one crucial fact. Aiko fell. The music's still going. <laughs> That's why does she keep singing? Oh, okay, good. That was that was a nice catch game. Oh no, my poor baby. It's probably staged. I'm not too sure about that. Ah, mmm. The cheery backing music continues to play, but Aiko continues to lie there. She attempts to push herself back up, but ah, ah! She falls. The holographic screen starts to flicker. The audio distorts. The lights flash. Thank God, plot. And then with a the harsh sound like a scratched record, the stage is plunged into darkness. Not now, not now! How could this happen? I I'm sorry, and why on earth are you apologizing? Did you trip over a power cable? Um, not that I know of, sir. And spare the useless apologies and give me some space. Hey there, K-Shizzle! Hope you're doing well. We're right. Think, think, I need to think. I don't have any time. Damn. Language, Ryoichi. This isn't the time to mind my manners. This is a disaster. A huge disaster. And losing our heads won't help the situation. You're right. You're usually right. <clears throat> Ryoichi sighs and runs a hand through his hair. He's mussing up his oh-so-fashionable locks, but he can't bring himself to care right now. For once, there are more important issues to fuss over than his appearance. Right. Fine. I'm fine. Everything's... Not fine, but we'll have to try and manage. Sayuri, you go and talk to the lighting engineers. Try and figure something out, and make an announcement over the PA system too. I don't want anybody freaking out. On my way. Hideki and Yuko, go and appease the crowd, try and calm them, calm them down. Right you are, boss. I'll do my best. Kenji, you're coming with me. Do you have the tablet I gave you? I left it plugged in at the stage system. I was... Wait. What? Why haven't you been using it? Why wait for this to happen? Sure, surely you should have been standing by to press the button. I swore something like this might happen, so I thought it would be best to have it on standby. This way we won't need to deal with loading times. Excellent. You're so wonderful, Kenji. I could kiss you. Except for the fact that you've been bloody just standing here talking to me when you could have actually been doing something about the situation. Let's not go that far. Well, maybe not right now. I told Misaki to wait by the stage and keep an eye on the tablet, just in case some anybody tries to steal it. Should we go over? That sounds like a good idea to me. The two men make their way to the side of the stage where the audio equipment is set up. They weave their way around the crowds, trying hard not to stumble over their own feet. Without the lights, it really is dark. Just like the bottom of the... Like Subnautica! Misaki! Kenji spots the outline of his fiancée in the gloom and jogs, jogs over to her. Under any other circumstances he would run, but he cherishes his good health and would prefer to maintain it. What? Misaki, can you stand to one side? Like, what? That doesn't make any sense! It's, a, it's an emergency! In, under any other circumstances he would run. Just because maybe he'd fall over or something? Misaki, can you stand to one side? We need to use a tablet. The tablet? Maybe Kenji's eyes are growing accustomed to the gloom because he sees, at least he thinks he can see, a frown on Misaki's face. That's unusual. Horia Misaki is an ex-model. She's soft, sweet, and pretty. I don't give a shit! She dresses demurely, takes care of the housework, cooks all of Kenji's meals, and she ensures the dinner table is set and a warm bath drawn whenever Kenji returns from work. No matter how Kenji ignores her or belittles her or brushes her aside, Misaki never complains. She's perfect. Too perfect. So perfect, in fact, Kenji can hardly stand being with her. But in the relative dark of the concert hall, Misaki doesn't need to perform that role anymore. What? What? Why should she play at being a perfect wife and that's all it ever was? A play. Do you mean this tablet, Kenji? M Misaki, the tablet isn't where it should be. It's not connected to the stage. It's in Misaki's arms. What the hell? She's unplugged it. 
All of Aiko's backup data, every single one of her files, all the carefully constructed information that makes Aiko Aiko is in Misaki's possession. Thank you for backstory things during action scene. I know, right? For once, Kenji has to look at her. He has no choice. Misaki, please, give me the tablet. Why should I? There's an emergency! Like, have this argument lady. This is stupid. It's business. This is work-related. My job is on the line. Business, business, business. That's all you ever talk about. You're always away at the office, and when you're not, your brain's still miles and miles away. It's like you love your job more than you love me. Miss Horia, please. I understand you're under a lot of pressure, but you don't understand. You don't understand anything. Misaki hugs the tablet to her chest even tighter. Ah, allergies is cold and unloving. What, the tablet or her chest? But that's no different from Kenji. It hurts. It hurts so much. She sniffs her fingers. Trim. Now is not the time, my god. It hurts so much to love you, Kenji. It hurts to care for a man who treats you like dirt. It hurts waiting around at home, watching your dinner get cold while the hands go round and round on the clock. Always, 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 ever since we started going out, I've put you first. I even quit my career as a model for you. I've done everything for you. I do so much for you, but you don't appreciate it. You never appreciate it. It's like... It's like you see straight through me. Like I'm a virtual idol. This is actually made by a woman. Surprisingly enough, like you wouldn't you wouldn't think it from reading the content, honestly, besides the whole yaoi thing going on with those two. Kenji swallows, his throat feels dry, as though he swallowed cotton wool. She's right, of course. Everything Misaki is saying is true. She does love him. Kenji knows. It's made by a woman who makes lots of beauty games. Oh, I see. That's why everyone's so bloody horny all the time. She's right, of course. Everything Misaki says is, is saying is true. She does love him. Kenji knows how much she loves him. She makes it apparent, not simply through words, but through actions. She quit her job because she loves him. She cooks his meals because she loves him. She lets him trample all over her feelings with a one come home soon, honey, because she loves him. She loves him too much, but that makes being around her even more painful. Well, just get a divorce or whatever. Misaki's a nice woman, a kind woman, a good woman. She's a woman Kenji likes. No, not just that, respects immensely. But he's hurting her all the time, and he'll keep on hurting her. He can't help but hurt her because he doesn't love her like she loves him. But please, Misaki, the tablet, give me the tablet. Just don't be in a relationship with her. Like, end her misery, you piece of shit. Misaki's shoulders tense, her expression twists. And also, do this later, right? Jeez. And then... No, no, I won't. Misaki, Miss Horie, I won't give it back. I've given you far too much already. I've given you so much. Well, I'm sick of it. No more giving. I'm not going to obey you anymore. And with that declaration, Misaki turns on her heels. Well, wait and dashes off into the crowd. What is the point of this? This is not the time. Oh my God. The darkness soon swallows her on all sides. But what's going on? I can't see anything. Where did Aiko go? I think we have more important things to worry about right now. Hey, nothing's more important than Aiko. Did, did somebody just touch my butt? Oh, this poor unlucky woman. It, it was an accident, I swear. That's what everybody says. Oh, I, I, I don't like this comic relief character. I feel like it's just horrible stuff happens to her all the time. Now she's been sexually harassed. I don't like that. The convention hall is plunged into chaos. The crowd is packed together closely like molecules, but there's nowhere for us to go. I believe it's a non-Japanese creator, yeah, from, from California. People start pushing and shoving, and elbow digs into my side. A foot, complete with pointed heels, skewers my toes. I whimper. A voice calls over the PR system, imploring us to remain calm, but that is absolutely no effect. Nobody's listening. Ow. Hannah, are you alright? I, um, it... I'm getting pushed up against the stage. My lungs are being compressed against my ribcage. I, I can't breathe. My dress is getting all crumpled. Never mind your dress, Sadako. There are bigger issues at hand. Hana. Well, what? I tip my head upwards, blinking dumbly. You're being crushed! I can hear Hotaru's voice, but I don't know where it's coming from. I thought she was standing by my side, but the voice sounds like it's coming from above my head. Quite far above my head, actually. I know Hotaru's taller than me, but she isn't that tall. Did she have a sudden growth spurt? Give me your hand, I'll pull you up. Up? Onto the stage, it's safer here. But, but that's where Aiko performs! Don't be ridiculous, Aiko isn't performing here now, is she? Well, no, but... Then get your act together, your hand, here. 
Ah, fingers curl about my hand. Then, with a sharp intake of breath, minor hotarus, I feel myself being pulled upwards. Looks can be deceiving. Though hotaru favors such frilly clothes, she's incredibly strong. My chest is sore. So are my toes. Being spiked by that pointed heel hurt, though I doubt the perpetrator did it on purpose. I try to breathe slowly. Thank you. It's no problem. Toto wipes down her skirt with the palms of her hands. Is everybody else present and accounted for? I'm here, but you could have helped me too. You're older than me. You can take care of yourself. Humph, <laughs> stingy. And what about you two? Which boy? Robot girl? We're fine. Mako had a little trouble getting up on the stage since she has such tiny little arms, but I helped her. Shut up, Yasu. Uh Ow! -oh. Yasu whimpers. Did Makoto just elbow him in the stomach? Right. Now that we're no longer in immediate danger of being squashed, I think we should make our way to the back of the stage and escape. That way we can avoid the crush. That's what I was going to suggest, and I'm glad we're on the same wavelength. Um, we're not supposed to go around the back of the stage, right? Isn't it off-limits? Under normal circumstances, perhaps, but desperate times call for desperate measures. I don't want to crease my cute outfit. I spent ages sewing it. Yasu pokes his fingers tips together coyly. Coyly? Plus my boobs might start to deflate. Oh, God. That's too much information, Yasu. I thought you might appreciate how much care went into my costume. Well, I don't. I heard you complaining about your breasts enough when you were trying to put the outfit together. Try having real breasts and see how much of a pain they are then. But Mako, you don't have any... Finish that sentence and I'll garrot you. Yes, ma'am. Let's be quick. It seems other people have the same idea as us. All right, but I still feel unsure about this. <laughs> You're such a pure girl, Hannah. Hannah. The five of us make our way cautiously across the stage, sidestepping any amps or loose wires. I don't want to damage any expensive equipment. I don't have that kind of money in my bank account. And even if I did, I'd rather use it to buy Aiko merch. Yet yeah, your idol is dying. Why are you still thinking about merch? Aiko. Okay, here we go. After this disastrous performance, will they still continue? Oh my god, that's all you care about? After this disastrous performance, will they still continue to produce Aiko merch? God forbid they stop. Who cares about my idol dying, but, you know, all the merch. What will happen to her reputation? Right, time to let ourselves down carefully. I edge my way to the very back of the stage. With Hotaru's help, I'm able to pick my way down the steps that lead to the ground floor. I don't understand why that tablet thing... Like, why someone wasn't on standby. Not just to make sure someone didn't steal it, but to, like, press the button. Like Kenji. You know, like, why wasn't he there the whole time? Like, the, he was on the other side of the stage. It's weird. As I do so, fumbling every once in a while, I hear a dull hum. Then, without warning, the concert hall is bathed in bright artificial lights. It looks like the power is finally back up. Were you happy to announce the power is back up? Oh, thanks! <laughs> However, the sudden outage may have caused problems with Aiko's calibration. Please remain patient while we try to extent, assess the extent of the damage. Thank you. After crossing the back of the stage, the five of us make it to the sound booth. Hideki took me here yesterday and I recognize it. I recognize the people here too. Um, excuse me, are you Mr. Kitamura and Mr. Arata? Hmm? The older of the men, Kitamura Ryoichi from what I remember, turns. Wow, you remember his whole name. His forehead, which was creased with concern, irons itself smooth when he sees my faith. face. An easy smile catches his lips. Ah, oh, Miss Hana, I had the pleasure of making your acquaintance yesterday, didn't I? Um, that's right. I'm delighted you remember. On son time. She's he's she's fourteen. He he's in his forties. He takes my right hand in his and presses a kiss against the back of my palm. I flustered. This is not this is not appropriate. The other man, Arata Kenji, wasn't it? Seems less than amused by our intrusion. Why are you five back here? Don't you know you're trespassing? I apologize for the intrusion. I know it's impolite, but we had no other choice. We were right at the front of the stage. There was no other way to escape. If we'd stayed in the crowds, we would have been trampled. Well, maybe you would. You're so tiny. Shut up, Yasu. Makoto swiftly elbows Yasu in the solar plexus. The next time we come to a con, I should go as a robot. That's the only way to protect myself from you, isn't it? 
Robots are cooler than your stupid magical girls anyway. I resent that. And I resent this intrusion. If you have said your piece, please leave. Now. The lights are back on. There is no need for you to linger. Hey, Kenji. Don't be so hasty. Since they're here, we might as well ask for some help from these randos. Help? Forgive me, but I did not sign up to be a volunteer. We just wanted to watch the concert. So did we. It was going so well, too. Until that unfortunate power outage, that is. Um, is that all it was? What do you mean? I, um, well, never mind. Ryoichi's expression relaxes. His lips curve into a small smile. I knew I was right about you, Miss Hana. Wait, what? You're a smart girl. I can think of no better person I should entrust with this job. And your friends, too. A, a job? Mmm, a member of the PR team. An honorary member, should I say. Left a little while ago with an important piece of tech. A tablet, to be more precise. Hey, Ryoichi. Kenji gives the older man a warning look, but Ryoichi shrugs his concerns aside. The whole while, his easy smile doesn't flicker. We need that tablet back to perform some checks on Aiko. It's nothing too serious. The power outage might have corrupted a few of her files, so we want to double check before we can get the concert back on track. Kenji and I can't leave our post, however, so we'd appreciate it if you could get the tablet back for us. Back for us. A tablet? A tablet that contains Aiko's files? Exclamation mark! That might be exactly... No, it is exactly what I'm looking for. If this tablet contains all of Aiko's files, there must be something buried in there about her real programmer. I can get my hands on that. I can. Oh, thank God! Is this is this coming to an end? Mm. I can help reunite Aiko with the person who made her, but this plan would first require locating the tablet, and then I'd have to. I'd have to steal it, wouldn't I? I can't give it back to the PR team, no matter how charming Ryoichi is. Aiko's been in a critical state for over a week, and nothing has been done. Her malfunction during her performance says as much. The PR team, though they mean well, can't help her. Nobody can help her but her original programmer, and yet, for whatever reason, nobody at Lyric seems willing to contact them. I hope this is Act 2. Then I'll do it. I have to, but th that sounds pretty important. Can, can someone please look up, like, a walkthrough and see what percentage of the game I'm through? That would, that would be great. <laughs> is asking us for help really alright? I trust nobody else, my little flower. Little flower? Oh, please. I won't lie, the tablet is quite an expensive piece of equipment, but it isn't the end of the world if you can't retrieve it. We just want it sooner rather than later, that's all. And you seemed like quite the reliable little miss when I spoke to you yesterday. We spoke for less than a minute, I was about to say. But the impression you made was enough to last a lifetime. Would you do this for us, Hannah? It would be very useful and we would be incredibly grateful. Well, if you really want my help, then... All right, I'll do it. I don't think it's almost done, but let me look. Thank you so much, Aurea. <laughs> Hana? Yasuo blinks at me. He looks concerned. Are you sure? It sounds like a lot of responsibility. Yasuo has no idea. It is, but I care about Aiko. I clench my hands into fists. I have to try and psych myself up. Otherwise, I don't think I'd be able to go through with this. I care about her a lot. I might not be as zealous as some of the fans here, but Aiko's special to me. She's got me through some difficult times, and I want to show her how much I care about her. Bloody weeb. I thought how long to beat so this takes up to five hours. How long have you been playing? This is my... I think it's my third stream? Let me just double check now. Video producer... Where is Idol? Idol poorly one... Two... Oh, oh shit. Did I... Oh no! Hold on a second. I think I may I may have accidentally deleted one of the idle streams. Hold on. Please idle. Damn. We might have What's the point of playing this game? If if we don't have like the the vods there so people can Oh no! I'm so sad! This is the third stream. But like... The whole reason why I'm playing it... Is so that we can have a record there! Oh, I'm so grumpy everyone! I'm so cross! I guess you have to restart. 
Oh my god, why? Why is this my life? I wonder if there's some way to like get back because I know that Twitch sort of keeps records of the of the VOD somewhere. Hmm. I'll have to look into it. If anyone, for whatever reason, has like a recording of the first idol stream, please give it to me. So that I will not have done this in vain. I want to show her how I feel. I have to. I'm really I'm really disheartened now. No, I didn't send it over to YouTube. Because I like making the VODs on Twitch. God damn. As her fan, I'd never forgive myself if I sat back and did nothing while she was in trouble. I'm going to set things right. Yoichi whistles. You really must love Aiko. I've never seen such determination. Yeah, well... Oh, wait. Hold a sec. Hold on a second. There's a tiny chance... Whoops. No, go away. Cancel. Bear with me for a second while I, while I do this. It's there? The first one? Did I just, perhaps... The first one was part of a bunny video, was it? I can see... I can see one of them. But this is the third one. Is it called Bun 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 Bun? Because I thought that was just me looking at the buns. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, thank God. Yay! Okay, I just need to get on my VOD making game. Oh, thank God. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, William, for, for sorting that out. I was, I was really upset for a moment there because just the idea of having done this and then it, not having a recording of it would be depressing. Yeah, well, I've already failed her once. I won't make the same mistake again. Can't say that I follow, but that's just swell. Go out there and knock them dead, little flower. I'm glad Ryoichi, an actual lyric employee, has so much faith in me. Does he really need to give me a nickname? Oh, but does he really need to give me a nickname? It seems a bit over-familiar. I mean, I barely know the guy. Tell Ryoichi to cut it out! Hey, um, could you stop calling me that? What? Little flower. But don't you think it sounds cute? If I had a daughter, I'd totally call her that. But you don't have a daughter. At least I don't think he does. Ehehe, <laughs> guilty as charged. Besides, I do have a name. It's Hannah, remember? Of course I remember. I might be old, but my memory isn't that bad. You keep... Oh, God. Yoichi pouts. But if you're going to retrieve the tablet for us, I guess that makes you a valued team member for the time being. Since you're doing us a favor, I'll listen to your request. You prefer Hana, right? That's right, you horrible child predator. Seems like a waste to me, but I'll remember that. And that's for the person you're looking for. Wow, he actually he respects the little girl. He doesn't respect his co-worker. Yoichi's like 40 years old. He's 40 years old, in his 40s. There's eight endings, and people said the main story is about three hours long. I mean, I, I reached one ending. Hey there, Prudin, how's it going? You might have heard of her, she's about this tall. He gestures with one hand, with pink hair and blue eyes. Very pretty in the traditional way, you know? With the pink hair. Very pretty in the traditional way, with pink hair and blue eyes in Japan. Wouldn't look out of place in a kimono, but for the pink eyes. Pink, pink hair and blue eyes. Would look really good in a kimono, actually. And her name, well, he smiles. You might have heard of her. She's called Horia Misaki. She used to be a model. Well? <laughs> Why the hell did you do that, Yoichi? All endings is about seven hours of game gameplay. Well, we've done, like, three streams. Do what? You're off work with the mysterious black eye? Wow. Why did you ask a group of, of children for help? Yeah, good question. They're not children. The two women in fancy dress must be in their 20s at least. But your little flower is just a teenager, and more importantly, she has no real connection to Lyric. You're dragging third parties into our private business. The president will be livid! Oh, I don't know about that. The president will be livid, of course. It's inevitable. But I don't think Hana is completely unrelated to our company. Come again? 
You saw how passionate she was when she was talking about Michael. She's a fan in the true sense of the word, and I have faith in her. If any- yeah, from that one minute exchange, if anybody will get back our tablet, she will. But why her? There's absolutely no Let's Play videos on this game, so I can't tell where we are. <laughs> but why her? You could have asked somebody else, anybody else. Who, you? Ryoichi scoffs. Do you think after the exchange we had, Misaki is likely to take anything you say seriously? I... Kenji inhales. He feels short of breath. Look, the PR team is understaffed as it is. We don't have anybody else we can ask. Hideki and Yuko are trying to calm the crowds. Sayuri is making announcements. And as for you and me... Let's find a hotel room. Misaki probably doesn't want to see either of us. Wait, but does Misaki know about him? That wasn't apparent. Do you think she suspects? I'm not sure, but she knows how well we get along. I'm tired by association. For all my charm, I won't be able to sway her. There's like, there's one first 40 minutes video that came up for me. Oh, I see. Damn. I once gave myself a black eye when I was a kid by um, jumping on a trampoline and doing a flip, like a, a somersault in the air. Uh, I ended up kneeing myself in the eye and got black eye. Yeah. Damn. If only Sheena and Maida were, there, were here, then none of this would have happened. It's unfortunate, yes, but we have to make do where we can. But asking a teenage girl? What can teenage girls do? This isn't a young adult no this isn't a young adult novel for trying for crying out loud. Don't be so negative. We have more than enough to worry about as it is. I'm not being negative, I'm being realistic. Stop it! Like just argue somewhere else, like off out of the game. But you're forgetting something. Misaki used to be a teenage girl once upon a time. If anybody will be able to smoke her out of her hiding hole, Hana will by projecting her inner teenage girl onto her? What? Wow! It felt like there was something under the lid for a couple of days, and then you woke up yesterday and it's swollen and bruised. Maybe it's- maybe- have you been like trying to fiddle with it to see what's underneath? Maybe it's bruised from that. Let's just wait and see. I believe in her. Oh, thank god the scene's over. Next. Ah, Horia Misaki, I can't believe it. Um, Makoto frowns. She looks almost as confused as me. Sorry if this sounds stupid, but who's Horia Misaki? Huh? You mean you don't know who Horia Misaki is? No, I'm sorry. I'm not obsessed with gossip like you. Horia Misaki, hmm? She used to be a model. She was fairly popular too. She even did a bit of work for a few Lolita brands. She was in several Lolita fashion magazines, wearing clothes by devilish pretty and metamorphosis. She stopped a few years ago, though. I can still remember that. I was heartbroken. Nobody loves Misakichi as much as I do. Misakichi? That's what her fans called her, and I was like her number one fan. <laughs> of all people, I hardly think you have the right to call Misaki by that name. And why not? Because you're not a true Lolita, unlike Otaro and I. You wear cute dresses with full skirts, but you treat these clothes like mere costumes. Well, yeah, I'm only dressed like this because I thought it'd be fun. Isn't that the point of dressing up? No, 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 you don't understand. This isn't the real you. You're merely dressing up as a character. Otaro and I, however, are full-time elitas. This is not a simple fashion statement. It's a way of life. Yasu steps a finger in Sadako's direction. I half expect him to shout objection, but that's a tired joke. It doesn't matter whether I wear cute clothes for a single day or every single day, these clothes are still an important part of me. This is who I am, and it was thanks to Misakichi I was able to discover my love for cute clothes. Alright, alright, let's not get into an argument. We need to search for Misaki. Arguing won't accomplish anything. I suppose you're right. If it's for Misakichi's sake, I can abstain for now. Good. Now the convention center isn't too big, but it is quite crowded. But it is quite crowded. Searching might take a while. Do you have any ideas, Makoto? Let's just save here in case it crashes and... Here we go. Searching might take a while. Do you have any ideas, Makoto? Hmm, it would probably be better if we split into two groups. That way we can search more effectively. Indeed, two groups would be ideal. I don't want anybody going off on their own. That sounds like a good idea to me. So, Hotaru rummages about in her messenger bag, bag and procures her phone. It's a slim, expensive looking model in a plaid case. It's cute, but not overtly so. Classy. I don't care. If we're going to split up, it would be best if we shared contact details. This way we can find one another easily later. Right, I guess that makes sense. Hehe, <laughs> you think of everything, Hotaru. 
because you think of nothing at all. <laughs> How cruel! As I search for my phone, I find myself smiling. I'm going to add even more friends to my contacts list. I wonder if my mother would be proud of me. Oops. And speaking of friends, who should I team up with in the search for the elusive Misaki? Oh, this is interesting. I feel like we're gonna... So who here is less annoying? Do we want to go with Hotaru and Sadako? Do we want to go with Makoto and Yasuo? Do we want to go by ourselves? I mean, if I go by myself, it'll probably be... There'll probably be less banter. You know? And the banter is what's kind of getting me down right now. Yes, definitely go by myself. Looking back on it, that was probably a bad idea. Hotaru tried to talk me out of it. She told me it was foolish? You don't even know what Misaki looks like, Kana. How will you be able to find her? But I was stubborn. I might seem like a shy, retiring girl, but I have a stubborn streak with a mile wide. That's what my mother always says. Apparently I get it from my father. My mom says it's cute. She thinks my unexpected stubbornness... What stubbornness?! How has stubbornness entered the picture all of a sudden? My unexpected stubbornness contrasts well with the quieter, more demure aspects of my personality. I'm inclined to disagree. It isn't cute. It's debilitating. <laughs> it was certainly debilitating here, end game. I thought I had to be the one to retrieve the tablet. I thought I had to do it on my own. That was what I told myself. After all, Aiko approached me for help. She didn't approach Sadako or Hotaru. She didn't approach Makoto or Yasu. She, for whatever reason, decided to approach me. Ogawahana. Plain, dull, uninteresting Ogawahana. Being chosen by Aiko made me feel wanted, I suppose. It made me feel like I could make a difference. Like I mattered. I didn't want to let Aiko down. Not after she had placed so much faith in me. That's why I, stupidly, selfishly, brushed aside the help of my new friends. I told myself I didn't need friends. What? Where is this coming from? I just needed Aiko. But I was wrong. Just as Hotari warned me, I was unable to find Misaki. Though I searched the Koksai Center for hours, I couldn't find a trace of the ex-model or the lyric tablet that she stole. So that's the end of that. I couldn't find the tablet. I couldn't access those files. I couldn't save Aiko. I couldn't do a thing. I was too late. I know it's too late when I see the newspaper at breakfast the next morning. Skyandaru! Lyrics darling daughter, android poster girl Aiko malfunctions on stage at local event. There are too many exclamation points! Why are there so many exclamation points? Why does it sound so gleeful? Mom's miso soup, always so salty and delicious, tastes sour. Hey there, Mouse Gen 7171! I have to duck my head to blink away my tears. This is all my fault. And two, alone again. Well, we've discovered two out of eight endings. Well, honestly, I feel like we should go with Hotaru and Sadako because they're the ones who know what she looks like. Oh wait, no, Yasu looks knows what uh, she looks like as well. So, who are we gonna choose? Shall we have a vote? Let's have a vote while I get some more water. I'll be back. Uh, if someone, if one of the mods can set up a poll, uh, just a quick one. I'll be back.
I would uh, I would show you what the buns are doing as like a palate cleanser, but um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, but my phone's ba battery is like almost dead, so I probably wouldn't be able. To oh no, it's a draw so far. Oh jeez. I wonder while well, that while well, that thing's going, maybe how much? I've got twelve percent. Yeah, I'm well. I'm currently fostering buns right now, so why don't we take a little palate cleanser? Okay. May as well. I think we all need that. I think they have caused a little bit of a mess. But hopefully not too bad. Just ignore their poo, alright? Full screen and that and then... Bun cam! Alrighty. Okay, let's go have a little look. Okay, let me end that. So, ha very happy you stopped doom scrolling to come here instead. <laughs> okay, back to back to reality, i.e. idol. I'm sorry everyone. I'm gonna leap back into this. Yeah, they're very, very cute. The little buns, I like them. Wait, who won the who won the the thing? I wasn't I wasn't there for the end of the poll. If someone could tell me. 
Oh no. <laughs> Did we do that in vain? <laughs> the top one? Which one was the top? Oh, Hotaru and Sadako? Okay. Alright. The three of us searched the Kokusai Center for a good half hour, but were unable to find any trace of the ex-model Horie Misaki. I wouldn't know her on sight even if I did see her, but it seems particularly odd my Lolita companions can't pick her out of the crowds. Maybe it's because there are too many people? I don't think so. My vision is as sharp as an eagle's. I could pick out a popular Lolita idol from within 20 yards. If your vision is so exemplary, Sadako, why do you need to wear glasses when you drive? Minor details, minor details. Kotaru rolls her eyes. I am so sure. A sigh. Oh, wait, I hope she's still in the convention center. There's no guarantee she stayed here. Didn't Yoichi say she went to do something for the PR team? That's right, unless they asked her to go and grab some soy lattes. I don't see what reason she'd have to leave, particularly with that tablet. Sounds expensive. Yoichi didn't say what exactly Misaki went to do. He was maddeningly vague about more than one point. I did think that was somewhat suspicious. Right? Otaru offers me a small, rare smile. I am inclined to believe that things are not as clear-cut as he made out. Hmm? You think trouble's afoot, my dear Watson? I think something is certainly amiss amongst the PR team, but I understand why Ryoichi didn't want to, want to be too explicit. That could damage Lyric's reputation. So he asked for our help under vague terms without specifying what really happened? Hmm, giving us as much information as possible would only aid our search. Wait. So he must have had... Oh, he must have had a good reason to withhold it. Ooh! Sadako raises one hand above her ha head, shaking it in the air. I know, I know, pick me, miss. Yes, what is it, Wakahisa? I bet it was some sort of lover's feud. Lovers? Yes, both Ryoichi and Kenji love Misaki, and she was trapped between a rock and a hard place. With tensions running high, unable to choose between either suitor, Misaki, in her confusion, took the tablet and fled. Why was she doing that? For the attention. Oh my god. She was hoping the fair prince who loves her the most would chase her down and wrest the tablet from her hands, then get down on bended knee and propose. Yeah! Wait, how would the... If you... If they're angry at you, they're not going to propose. It's perfect. No, it's not. <laughs> Perfectly ridiculous. Thank you, Hotaru. Huh? I think it's a good theory. Sounds like something from a romance drama. But I love romance dramas. I know you do. Well, what do you think, Hana? Sadako looks at me imploringly. Do you think I'm on the right track? Wait, what? In terms of what? What was the question? <laughs> on the right track and what? What sounds a bit unlikely? Oh, the, the lovers quarrel? Or... I'm just gonna choose one at random. It sounds a bit unlikely. You might be onto something? Actually, that doesn't sound like a bad theory. I know, right? I'm a genius. Please. Daughter rolls her eyes. She looks unimpressed. Please don't encourage her wild delusions, Anna. She's difficult enough to manage as it is. You say that like I'm some kind of unwieldy puppy. You certainly act like one. Anyway, I apologize for changing the subject, but I need to go to the restroom. Oh, you don't find my talk of love so sickening it turns your stomach, do you? I've known you long enough to become impervious to your ridiculous yarn, Sadako. What do you take me for? She has a point. I just need to use my medicine. Is, it, is that quite alright with you? I don't mind. We're just walking around in circles anyway. Indeed, a small break will hardly kill our momentum. We have no momentum to speak of. I just finished a Hades run. Nice! Did you win? So saying, the three of us make our way to the nearest restroom. Daru enters while Sadako and I hang behind. That was the general plan, at least, until... Excuse me. Otaru pushes the door open and peers at us, her head tilted to one side. There's a curious expression on her face. It's a mixture of surprise and concern? I believe I may have found Miss Misaki. Oh. I've never seen Horia Misaki in any magazines, but I can't deny that she's pretty. She looks every bit like a model should. What? Six years old? Her hair is glossy, sleek, and perfectly styled. Her skin is smooth and devoid of blemishes. Her eyes are pure and clear, like freshly cut crystals. She's gorgeous. Oh my god, just shut up! Even though her nose is snotty, her lips are chapped, and the corners of her eyes are red and puffy. 
even though she has quite clearly been crying. You won! Congratulations! Nice! Was that your first win, or have you won a few times before? Crying for quite a long time. More than half an hour. <laughs> to be precise. Um, I'm sorry. The woman called Horiya Misaki, who used to be a model, attempts a watery smile. It doesn't really work. Um, goodness, I didn't want anybody to see me like this. Well, stay in the cubicle! Why did you leave? Which is why you were hiding in the bathroom stall? Leave it to her daughter to cut to the chase, even in the presence of her idol. Yes, um, I... it's a bit embarrassing, really. I can imagine. You don't have anything to be embarrassed about, Misaki. What? I know it must be hard being so beautiful, but stay strong. I'm sure Kenji and Yoichi will accept you no matter which one you choose. Kenji? Well, what do you know about Kenji? Um, to be honest, I hardly know him. I'm more interested in his attractive friend. Kenji didn't send you to find me, did, did he? Ryoichi was the one he asked, actually. Oh, Ryoichi, of course. Misaki's expression twists. A pained sigh escapes from her list. lips. I'm thinking of trying out Hades soon as well. I got it for Christmas. Well, not for Christmas. I got it gifted to me, and then it was retroactively made a Christmas present. <laughs> Yoichi would be there. Yoichi's always there. Uh, um, I blink at Misaki anxiously. I'm not sure how to interact with people at the best of times. This can hardly be called that. What? Interact. Oh, the best of times. Uh, I'm in a restroom with a crying ex-model whose mascara is leaking all over her cheeks. Gross. These are the worst of times. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times! You stupid monkeys. I bet I can't hide behind Hotaru and Sadako now. I'm here in a mission. I'm the main character. I need to try and get that tablet from the waterlog Misaki somewhere or another. And I want to try doing it by myself. I want to try and save Aiko. But forgive me for asking, but did you and Yoichi have some kind of argument? Hmm? He didn't tell you? He was a little sparse with the details. Yoichi, Kenny, and I... Wait, why is she mentioning Yoichi? Like, how does she know that it was with... Anyway. Miss Spout, I suppose you could say. Quite an intense one, too. Hence the tears. Hence the tears. Yes, I knew it was a love triangle. Please be quiet, Sadako. The adults are talking. How mean! No, that woman, Miss Sadako, is it? Has a point. Yay, I'm so smart! Sadako. Hotaru gives Sadako a warning look. It smolders. Hey, 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 but my guess was right, Hotaru. Don't I score any points? Don't talk about scoring points. This isn't a game. You're right. You're right. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I, I don't really know you, but I wouldn't say that. Like, what do you even do? You don't... <sighs> I am. I let my personal issues get in the way and I sabotage the concert for everyone. That's, that is true. It was selfish of you, I know, especially after everything Sayuri did to help, but... She sniffles. Wait. I guess deep down inside I'm a selfish person. I'm sure you had valid reasons to take the tablet. So you knew you know about the tablet too? Yes, we do. I knew what you asked you to get it back, is that right? Yeah, he seemed worried about you. Ryoichi? Worried about me? I doubt it. Wait, how does he, she know all of a sudden? Misaki sniffs. She wipes her eyes with the back of her arm again, displacing yet more tears. Ryoichi is never worried about me or my feelings. He's only worried about the damage I might cause if I were to find out. But I think I've known for a while. I just didn't want to admit it. Not to, Wait, don't you mean Kenji? I feel like you mean Kenji here. I think I've known it for a while, I just didn't want to admit it. Not to myself, I wanted to keep living in a fantasy world. I'm not entirely sure what Misaki's talking about, but and I don't want to pry. I have no right. We're not friends and she has no obligation to tell me how she feels. I don't want to take advantage of somebody when they're in a state like this. The only thing I want is a tablet. <laughs> so I've got to take advantage of her. I want to help Aiko. Goodness, I've been such a fool. I must look like such a ridiculous, desperate woman trying to cling on to something I lost a long, long time ago. Why is she talking about Ryoichi when she should be talking about Kenji, which is her fiancé? Misaki reaches into her shoulder bag and procures a flat silver object. The cover is embossed with the lyric logo. It's the tablet. That was all this was. A plea for attention. You came here for this, didn't you? 
Yes, we need that tablet. Yoichi asked us to get it and I couldn't refuse. I couldn't because... I ball my hands into fists. They feel heavy at my side. I'm close to getting what I want. I'm so, so close I can't stand it, but I still have one more hurdle left to clear. Aiko, I hope you can keep waiting for me. I'm working as hard as I can. Aiko is my favorite idol and I want to help her. I have to. I don't know you, but I know you're in a lot of pain and I sympathize. But Aiko's in a lot of pain too. She's suffering. I want to retrieve her missing files and restore her to her former self. So please. I squeeze my eyes shut. I'm starting to get a little emotional myself and I can feel tears beginning to well up in my eyes. Oh god. I bow my head as deep as it will go. My hair fall my short, choppy hair falls forwards, loose locks slipping over my shoulders in front of my ears. Thanks for that. <laughs> I can hear my heart pounding inside my rich gaze. I'm tem I'm trembling. Please, Misaki. Let me save the idol I admire so much. Well, that was a huge waste. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I need to save that one uh, separately. Um, let me print screen there. Save as waste of time. Excellent. Yuko sighs and exhales a mouthful of smoke into the air. Hideki watches the smoke coil through the sunset sky, his arms folded. It's warm outside, but not unpleasantly so. Rather, it's a soft, subtle warmness that makes Hideki's cheeks glow. But maybe that's because he's alone with Yuko. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Hideki always flushes whenever he's alone with Yuko. He can't help himself. Erg, I'm so pissed off. Yuko exhales yet more smoke. I didn't even get to sing a single song. God damn. It's quite outside the convention center, save for the sound of the Aiko banners fluttering in the breeze. There are no more fans. They've already gone home. They went home three hours ago when the concert was suddenly, without any kind of fanfare or forewarning, cancelled. The official excuse was that the power outage had scrambled Aiko's files. Hideki doesn't understand the finer points, but he's more inclined to believe she had some sort of breakdown. So were the rest of the fans. That's so typical of Aiko. Thanks for the clip, Aurea. <laughs> That's so typical of Aiko, trying to upstage me on my big day. I don't think she did it on purpose. I know she didn't, but that makes it even worse. How can I be pissed at her when she looked so pitiful? Yuko drops a cigarette butt to the ground and grinds it beneath her heel. I was meant to sing too. I wanted to sing. That's the whole reason I agreed to turn up. You didn't want to help the PR team? God, no. I mean, look at me. I'm an upcoming idol, not a pack mule. These hands. She holds her hands up for show. Her fingers are long and slender, tipped with perfectly manicured nails painted pale blue. One of them has chipped. Weren't created so I could set up stalls or arrange merch or hold boxes around. They were made to hold a microphone, right? And the hearts of my audience. Hideki is half tempted to tell Yuko she's already captured his heart. Uh, uh, <laughs> but the moment soon passes. I didn't even get to wear that cute dress you picked up for me on the stage. I only got to wear it for a few hours at that stupid handshaking event. Aren't you wearing the exact same clothes that you wore at the event? Everyone who went there only came to see Day anyway. It was a total waste. I don't know about that. I think you look nice. I did, didn't I? Yuko muses, leaning back against one against one the columns around the back of the Coxeye Center. When I tried that dress on, I was so elated. I thought I was finally going to get to perform on the stage. It was like the happiest day of my life. Isn't that meant to be your wedding day? Oh my god, you just... Go away! Please. Yuko rolls her eyes. I'm an idol. I'm not allowed to date, much less get married. Get your head screwed on straight, Hideki. So you're making do with the best you have? Well, to be honest... Yuko digs around in a bag for another carton of cigarettes. When did she get those, anyway? And unearths her fourth, is it? Who is the narrator? <laughs> Hideki doesn't know how many Yuko smoked during the last 20 minutes. Probably a lot. Far too many. Especially for an idol. Hideki knows he should scold her, but he doesn't have the heart. He feels just as stressed as she does. I don't mind the whole not dating thing. You don't? Well, I do, but I can put up with it if I can be an idol. I've wanted to be an idol since, like, forever, ever since I saw the red and white song battle on New Year's when I was a kid. The crowds were always huge, and they cheered so much after each performance. 
It was kind of tacky, a little too gaudy, a little too flashy, a little too loud, but I always thought it was incredible. I'll have to fire it up the crowd gut. Everyone seems so happy. Well, you know, kudos to the, the author. They know about the Red and White Song competition for New Year's. Big, big part of Japan, uh, Japanese culture. Even the performance seemed happy. Since then, I decided I want to make people happy too. I want to stand on a stage in front of thousands of people and sing. Yuko tries to light the end of her cigarette. Fumbles. She tries again, successfully this time. I don't care how successful she is at lighting a cigarette. Oh, no. Now we've got a description of the cigarette. A small orange flame, no bigger than a pinhead, catches the end of her cigarette. You reckon no bigger than a cigarette end as well? Within seconds, it starts to smoke. Yuko inhales deeply, tilting her head back. I was so excited when I heard about this concert. I was only going to sing a few songs, but... Yeah, cool how good doesn't have big crowds. You're right. <laughs> it's got a huge TV audience, which I think is what they're thinking of, maybe. Even if it was only a few songs, it was a start. It was something. And then it gets cancelled and I don't even get to sing. Where's the humanity? Yuko exhales. The wisps of smoke coil through the air. They're pretty. Hideki would find himself drawn to them. If he weren't so... <laughs> if he weren't so taken with Yuko's face... Oh, oh my god. Uh, don't worry, Yuko. I'll always stand by you. Oh, you will? Yeah, you didn't get to perform, but I know what you're capable of. You're much, much better than others give you credit for. You're even better than Aiko. Oh, shut up! Aiko, really? But don't you have an Aiko phone strap, Hideki? Ah, well I do, but that doesn't mean anything. It's just a placeholder. What do you mean? I was using it, um, to take up space until you become so popular I can replace it with the first time of you! You can merch, huh? That seems unlikely, but thanks, Hideki. I feel a lot better. Anytime is what I'm here for. Supporting people is quite literally Hideki's job, but it's different when he's with Yuko. It's always been different with Yuko. Hey, Yuko? Hideki? Yuko takes a cigarette from her lips. Her head is tilted to one side. Her eyes are large and implore. Is she waiting for something? You're going to bed? This is a really good time to go to bed, Bill Casey. I hope you have a good night. <laughs> Yuko, I, I... You what? Yuko smiles coquettishly. I can't stand men who keep me waiting, Hideki. She prods the tip of Hideki's nose. They're so close, Hideki can even smell her perfume. He shivers. Yuko, I, I... Yay! Oh, thank God! Oh, the pain! The pain! <laughs> hey, lovebirds! Break time's over! And just like that, the mood is ruined. Hideki coughs and backs away from Yuko. His face bright red, he adjusts his tie, brushes his hair behind his ears, and stands up straight. Ah, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Ryoichi snorts. Oh, cut it out. I'm not a drill sergeant. I won't ask you to drop and give me 20. He wouldn't be able to manage two, let alone 20. Probably. Anyway, we need you two back inside ASAP. We're still cleaning up. Never thought I would say thanks, Yoichi, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, he's saved by a 40-year-old child predator. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's sad because it's true. Uh, still? It takes a while. We brought a lot of stuff over. The merch is an old packed away. So I get to haul more cardboard boxes with my fair maidenly hands? Wonderful. They won't be fair and maidenly after today's finished. That's the best one! That's literally her... What her sarcasm meant? Not if you've been working hard enough. I hope I get paid more for this. Don't worry, I'll see to it that you get amply rewarded, milady. <laughs> Good. You really do need the help, though. We're one person down. Kenji had to leave early. He got a text from Misaki. Finally. After two hours of complete radio silence. He just wants an excuse to get out of work. I think I might be a bit more serious than that, Yuko. You bad girl. Ryoichi glances at Yuko. A more, or to be more precise, the cigarette still pinched between her thumb and forefinger. You're not meant to smoke, you know. I know. Ah, Yuko means she's very so sorry and it was just a moment of weakness. You'll put it out, won't you? I don't see why I should. I'm pissed. But you're a trainee idol. You're not allowed to smoke. Hey, don't sweat it. I'm not going to tell tales. What? Really? Mm, we've all had a stressful day. I could use a pick-me-up myself right about now. What do you have to be stressed about? Many things. Being duped by a teenage girl is one of them. Yuichi sighs. Oh man, the present is not going to be happy about this. I screwed up big time. 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Good, I hope it stays that way. So what do you say? Lend me a cigarette? Then you'll be complicit in a crime. I better keep my big mouth shut then, huh? Yuko seems to ponder for a few moments, her fingers hovering over her bag. Before, with a small shrug, she finally gives in. At least Ryoichi was the one who saw it. If it was Kenji, or worse, the super serious Sayuri, they definitely report her gross misconduct to the higher-ups. Here, don't smoke it all at once. Yuko hands the single, single cigarette over to Ryoichi. He bows his head and thanks. Thank you very much, honey. Oh, shut up. Oh, thank God it's over. It's late in the evening and the sun is beginning to set. Oh, thank God. The sidewalk is dyed with a soft orange glow and the streets are relatively devoid of pedestrians. It's easy for Kenji to pick up Misaki. She's sitting on a bench, her head bowed. When Misaki wants some alone time to think, she often comes here. It's the same place she used to wait for Kenji when they went on date dates together. Oh, how times change. If only they were waiting to go on a date now. Kenji! Misaki stands when she sees him approaching. Misaki, let me guess, you don't have the tablet. That's what he wants to say, but he can't. There are more important things to worry about now. Then why does he want to say it anyway? Misaki, where the hell have you been? Well, um, after the concert, everything was so intense, I needed some fresh air. So you ran away? Misaki winces at the tone of his voice. So does Kenji. He didn't mean to sound so stern or authoritarian. It just slipped out. I'm sorry, Misaki. I just, I was worried about you. You were? Yeah, I mean, you, you are my, um, my fiancé. Oh, Kenji. Misaki's eyes soften. Her voice trails away, lost to the balmy air. Misaki, we should get going. I don't want to have this conversation outside. The old Misaki would bow her head and agree. She would apologize for being a nuisance and she would follow behind Kenji like a toy on a string. But this isn't the old Misaki. The new Misaki, who has committed a crime of robbery, raises her head, meeting Kenji's gaze, gaze with her own and says one simple word, no. But it's enough to stagger Kenji completely. He didn't expect that. He didn't expect that at all. In all the time they've been engaged, he's never heard Misaki say no. Hey, Misaki, this is no time for joking around. I'm stressed enough as it is. I don't want to air our dirty laundry in public. We can't talk out here, so it would be better if you came back home and... No, Kenji, I'm not going. So you want to stay on the street? Is that it? That isn't it at all, but, but, I mean, yeah, right? You called it home, and I, I can't go back to that place. That place! It isn't my home anymore. So, you've decided? You don't want to come back with me? Misaki shakes her head. Then where are you going to go? I asked Sayuri. She said she'd take me in for a little bit. Kenji grits his teeth together. Stop encouraging. Oh, thank you so much for breaking the awkwardness. <laughs> Thanks for resubscribing, Pudin-chan. Uh, I can't wait for him to start gaslighting her. <laughs> Um, Sayuri, of course, why does she always have to meddle in his affairs? If Sayuri hadn't stuck her nose in their private business, none of this would have happened. But he's just deflecting. This isn't Sayuri's fault. Not really. So, um, are you going to move your things? I already went back earlier. Wow, that was quick. I have some of my clothes in here. Misaki gestures to the bag, lying at her feet. I, um, I'm not sure if I'll go back for more, but right now I don't think I want to. I can't face it, sir. Misaki extends her hand and unfurls her fingers. The house key lies on her palm. A goose would only enhance this scene in my opinion. I was imagining one just like walking past. Oh, actually, you know what? I just realized something. Oh no. Hold on a second, bear with me for a sec. A sec? Uh, I need to get something, but I feel like I can enhance this. Um. I don't know if you can see this. No, you can't. All right, well, let me change something quickly. Wait, why is this so small? Ah! Ah! No! I should have been doing this from the start, you know? 
How could I have been so silly? Is this full screen now? That's not what full screen looks like. Okay, let me change this a bit. I don't know what the hell is going on here. Transform. Fit to screen. I don't know how we didn't think of this before. What a silly lack of planning on my part. I don't know why it's not actually going full screen. It's weird. Maybe I'll do reset tra Ah, for some reason that helped. Okay. Much better. Okay, where are you? Misaki extends her hand and unfurls her fingers. Her house key lies on her palm. Wait, where is the desktop goose? Oh, there. House key lies on her palm. Wait, why does the desktop goose disappear? That makes me grumpy. Take it. I don't need it. Where's my goose? When I click away, you can see the goose. But otherwise you can't, and I don't understand why that is. It's making me cross. Maybe there's some options here I can deal with. What about this? That seems to be good. Clicking must bring the game to the fore. Okay, now. We're gonna play it in windowed mode. Take it! I don't need it! So don't you think you're being a little hasty? I don't think so. This has been coming for a while. I just never had the courage. I wanted to try and ignore our problems, but... Why wasn't I doing this from the beginning? How, what, 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 what a great way to get through this together. I couldn't do it. It hurt too much. Just looking at, looking at her face there. But what about our engagement? What's going to happen? The engagement ring around Misaki's finger catches in the light. It shimmers. I don't know. I need some time to think about it. Some time alone. Yeah, it does kind of seem like Desktop Juice is trying very hard to not be in this game. Time without Kenji. All right, fine. I see how it is and I won't try and stop you. You're an adult. You can do what you want. Thank you, Kenji. Thank you for understanding. Kenji winces. Just don't do that. What? Don't thank me. I don't deserve it. How can Misaki thank him even now, after everything that's happened? Thank you for ignoring me. Thank you for cheating on me. Thank you for breaking my heart. But Misaki brushes these concerns aside with a few simple words. Don't be silly, Kenji. I don't say things I don't mean. And I'm thanking you because I want to. But why? For not blaming me. For not hating me. For not making this harder than it, than it has to be. And thank you for being such a good friend. But he's not been a good friend at all. I eat my dinner in record time and stand by the sink washing up my plates and bowls while my mom is still picking at her white rice. She looks, she looks at me curiously, frowning. What's wrong, honey? Were you really that hungry? Um, well, it was actually the opposite. My stomach churns, full to the brim with rice and seaweed. I feel sick. Do you want another helping? I set a dish aside for your invisible father, but he won't mind if you help yourself, especially not if you take some of his seaweed. Uh. Mom giggles. You know what he's like with his seaweed. He's such a baby. Yes, you've established this ages ago. Really, it's fine. I don't want more food. But seaweed's a fair. Oh my god. We don't need to rehash this. Seaweed's your favorite, isn't it? It is, but... The lyric tablet weighs on my conscious conscience. I hope I didn't do the wrong thing. What if Misaki gets in trouble? What if I get in trouble? I, um, I told my friends I talked to them when I got back, so they'll probably be waiting for me. Oh, honey, you made friends? Really? 
So she thanks him for not further abusing her. Just ignoring her and... Yeah, just ignoring her. Very nice 10 out of 10 storytelling. <laughs> I know mom means well, but I wish she didn't sound so surprised. Yeah, um, at the convention. There were some really nice people there. This is like the best solution for a visual novel, you know? I might do another visual novel at some point with Desktop Goose. There are some really nice people there. That's wonderful. I'm so happy for you. So tell me, what were the names? Blood types, star signs. Did they also like Aiko? Any cute guys or better yet? Any cute girls? Mom, please. I'm just curious, Anna. I've never heard you talk about your friends before. I want to know. Why is that? Sorry. Why is it better yet any more girls? Does she want her child to be gay? Or is she gay? I don't understand. I think both of these are ducks, honestly. Mom, please. I'm just curious, Hana. I've never heard you talk about your friend, but I want to know. I sigh. I'm glad I have such a supportive mother, but she can be a pain to deal with sometimes. But I guess indulging her won't hurt. Uh-oh. Oh no, I don't, I don't, uh. Let's, let's just try and, because her friend, Yuko is her friend's daughter, so let's try and shake things up a bit. Well, I don't know if I call her cute, but I did meet Yuko yesterday. Oh, another Shiko's daughter? How nice! Yeah, um, she was at a handshake event with Lei, since, you know, she's a trainee idol. Now, Shiko told me a little bit about it, actually. She said Yuko's been having a hard time at Lyric. What, really? It's hard to believe that. Yuko's so bright and confident, I can't imagine her having any problems. She spoke to all of her fans cheerfully at the handshaking event, and she didn't get embarrassed or flustered for even a second. I don't think I'd be able to do that. I'm not outgoing like Yuko is. Yes, apparently her contract is quite strict. It dictates what clothes she's allowed to wear, how many calories she's allowed to eat per day, and how she, she should act towards her, san, her fans. And her training regime is so strict too. What, really? Mmm, Yuko has singing and dancing lessons five times a week, and her coaches are strict. Sometimes she doesn't come home until 10 p.m. At least, that's what Nadeshiko said. Wow, Yuko really is working hard. And she sounded so cheerful when I met her, too. And you still wanted me to be an idol, despite knowing that? I thought it might be good for you at the time, but I must confess I'm starting to reconsider. Good, I don't want to be an idol. Don't you want to try? Oh, thank goodness. Not if it's that hard. I always knew being an idol was difficult, but I didn't realize it took up quite so much time. I think I've gained a newfound respect for Yuko. Anyway, I have stuff to do. Some of my friends from the convention want to talk to me! Uh-oh. Well, don't let me keep you. Enjoy the rest of your evening, honey. I will. <laughs> Held a message for reasons. Identity. Ad permitted term. Ass mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> mom is an identity or ass? <laughs> I go to the kitchen and scramble up the stairs. I take them two at a time, my heart pounding with each and every step. Oh, okay, no, you're done. I know what I'll be doing for the rest of the evening. Wink. I've got that Ico body pillow now, apparently. Oh, I'll be trying to hack into an expensive piece of Lyric software and extract a series of top secret files to save Ico. I'm doing this for her, so you better appreciate it, you dowdy granny idol. What? But the dowdiness is part of Ico's stuff. Oh my god, I don't give a shit. She's definitely charmed me. I mean, that's apparent. When I get into my room, the first thing I do is check my phone. I have a few messages on Paco Paco from the convention attendees. Most of them are from Yasu, but I ignore them. It's cruel of me, I know, but I have business to attend to. Is Ico still there? I hope I'm not too late. Why don't we leave it here so we're all left in suspense? Yeah? I think, uh, I think that would be, that would be good. Because it's a little bit late. Let's put a save there. Hey there, Dumby! You, you're just in time for the ending! Oh, wait. Quit. 
What? No, 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 no. Main menu. There we go. So, let's find somebody to raid. Who have we got here? We have uh, Bunny Bubble T playing Animal Crossing, Jordan Rusko playing Phasmophobia, and we have Ninja9 playing Final Fantasy XI. Um, has anyone got any recommendations, particularly for, for people of color who might be streaming right now, who I don't have on my list? Very keen to be supporting people of color. Will I continue this nightmare tomorrow, Cav? Quite possibly, yeah. I just want this to end, honestly. <laughs> Barmy Barmy? I don't know who Barmy Barmy is, but I will try to raid them. Barm... E Barmy? Barmy Barmy. Invalid username. Oh, Barmy Army. God damn. Raid... Barmy Army. Okay, let's read them. Thank you so much for the recommendation, William, and I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao!